Yesterday, Dan Deardorff, when we talked to some of the Bears, we got an inkling of how they're feeling. Yeah, what they're feeling, I think, is this. Dan Hampton, the defensive tackle, told us, if I look at 1985 on a 1-10 to scale, it's got to be a 10. When I look at 1986, it's got to be a 2. And remember the second week of the season, we saw the Bears, and I talked about Mike Ditka having 45 guys going in 45 different directions, that he's got to pull them together as a group. Here we are in the second half of the season, and I'm not so sure he's done it yet. You know, Lehman Bennett has a different kind of problem with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They won their second game last week. And I want to know what the Bears fear in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if anything, today. Well, the big man for Tampa Bay is James Wilder, but I don't think he's the guy they're concerned about. It's Steve Young, the quarterback. He's such an outstanding athlete. He has such excellent abilities to scramble. But the way the Bears blitz, he has the ability to break their containment, get upfield, and make some big plays. The other thing about Tampa Bay is strictly emotion. They won last week. They've got 74,000 in here let's be re realistic this is their Super Bowl and this to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the game of games all we need is Sid Caesar and your show of shows and we're all set Dan as you look at the weather conditions outstanding day and it's a hot one 10 degrees above normal and we'll see how the Bears react to that the Bears have won the toss and they will receive and deep is Thomas Sanders and Dennis Gentry. Sanders is number 20. And kicking off will be Donald Igwebike for the Buccaneers, who are wearing the white jerseys this afternoon. Full house, big game for Tampa Bay. And needless to say, for the Bears as well. And we're underway, and it's fielded in the end zone by Sanders. And Sanders is stopped just beyond the 15-yard line. And the punch and hit. Mike Tomczak gets set to lead Chicago. Nathan Wansley on the stop for Tampa Bay. And here is the defense that Tomczak will be facing in Tampa Bay. And the penalty has been thrown, and it's going to be against the Bears, putting them in a big hole to start. Holding during the run back, number 54, offense. First up, Brian Cabral, who was just activated in time for today's game. He had been on injured reserve. Tampa Bay, Bob Nelson, Dave Logan, the nose tackle, and Ron Holmes, a good pass rusher. Keith Browner, Jeff Davis, Scott Brantley, and Chris Washington are the linebackers. Vito McKeever and Rob Jones are the corners. Craig Swope and Craig Curry, the safeties. Two rookies starting in the secondary for the Buccaneers and another former USFL first-year man. First and ten on the eight for Tomczak. Throwing on first down from the end zone and completing his pass to Willie Gall. To the 25 and a gain of 17 on the first play of the game. Rod Jones on the stop. Well, when you've got a rookie on the corner, why not go after him early? Rod Jones, their first round draft choice here in Tampa Bay. And He's got the speed to stay with a Willie, Willie Gall, but you see he just overreacts a little bit. Willie breaks off the pattern, and Jones not able to make the break with Gall. That's a good way to start the game, not so much for Willie Gall, but more for Mike Thompson. First and 10 at the 25. Walter Payton is indeed starting this game after being shaken up in the last one. The pass is incomplete, and it was intended again for Gall. And good defense by Rod Jones again, one of the rookies in the secondary. Interesting first two plays, two passes in the vicinity of Rod Jones. That time I think we saw clearly Willie Galt's left leg did indeed come down out of bounds, even and, though he made the catch. And Dan, Mike Tomczak told us the last time that Galt is his favorite receiver. Every quarterback has a favorite. Well, if you're Mike Tomczak and Willie Galt isn't your favorite receiver, you ought to be analyzed for something. And the rest of the Bears offense, second and 10 at the 25. with a pass rush. Walter Payton has blockers in room and another first down. And Payton in Tampa Bay territory to the 35. Inside the 20. A 57-yard play to Walter Payton, and most of it done by Payton. The great backs know how to set up their blockers. Peyton drifts out, realizes, look at this, as he's in front of Mark Bortz, his guard. He hesitates, allows Bortz to go upfield and make the block. If Peyton doesn't hesitate, if he doesn't stutter step and allow his offensive linemen, as we see Thayer out front, that goes for maybe five or six yards. What a way to start a game for Mike Tomczak, but that is nothing more than superlative work by Walter Peyton. Vito McKeever and Rod Jones on the stop. First and 10 Bears on the Buccaneers 18. 
And Matsui gets the call and pulls forward to the 15 yard line and the nose tackle David Logan was there. Dave, uh, I'm just I'm amazed at the way that Walter Payton his abilities to think while he's on the move. So many people when they get a ball in their hands just go to instinct. They don't have the presence of mind to think what is the entire scheme? What is going on around me? Walter Payton that time able to hesitate allow his lineman to get out in front and that's why they had the big play. That's that's just extraordinary work. Second and seven and the 15. Two and a half minutes gone by first quarter. And Payton slices off the left side to the 11 yard line. Chris Washington and Ron Holmes on the stop and Mike Ditka who has had his hands full with problems in the year following a world championship. Yeah I guess we could say that see Johnny Rowland there on his left side the offensive backfield coach and Doug Flutie standing to the right we don't know whether Doug's going to see any action today it looks like only if they get a big lead but boy, everything went Tampa Bay's uh, way here initially they got a penalty on the kick they made the Bears start with poor field position but they've given that up in a hurry. It's third and three, two tight ends for the Bears. Tim Reichman joins Emory Moorhead. And there's Peyton. Cuts inside. And Peyton has a first down inside the five-yard line. Craig Curry, the free safety and middle linebacker Jeff Davis making the stop. First down, Chicago. We're going to see a block by number 80 Tim Reitman right there as he pins Keith Browner to the inside that gives Walter time to stretch the sideline and then make his cut back upfield as we see there's no pursuit coming back from the inside Tim Reitman that time on the perimeter with a good springing block for Walter Payton fifth in the NFC and in 16 games against Tampa Bay he has scored 10 touchdowns and seven times has gone over the 100 yard mark keep in mind today again that he's playing with a dislocated big toe. Matsui goes in motion. Tomzak rolling out. Trapped and throws the ball away and penalty markers fly all over the place. Good blitz by Chris Washington and they'll talk it over as the flag is thrown on first and goal. Can't make this call without your with your hat on as we see the face mask against Tampa Bay. Rick Jorgensen laid his hat down on the ground. And Lehman Bennett, who previously coached at Atlanta. We had grass and control on the quarterback. During the grass, number 51 on the defense, grabbed the face mask, pulled him down. Half the distance to the goal, first up. A costly penalty. Oh, there's no question about it that the face mask is being grabbed by Chris Washington. So he gets a sack but unfortunately that that counts for absolutely nothing as the penalty gives the Bears a first down Chicago native Chris Washington who was knocked unconscious in the Buffalo game and was taken off and uh, a scare for the fans and the Buccaneers and what a frustration you get in there you do what you're supposed to do but then because one hand on the face mask you nullify everything still first and goal now on the five yard line and Peyton looking for room. And Walter Payton close to the goal line. And a fumble. Payton lost the ball. But the Bears apparently recovered, and the Bears are inside the one. Tampa Bay again slow with their pursuit from the inside, allowing Payton to turn upfield. We see the support upfield that time. Craig Curry forces Peyton back to the inside but the Tampa defense over pursues and Walter nearly gets in inside the one yard line. The big play was a 57 yard screen pass to Walter Peyton second and goal at the one. And it's Tom Zack who goes over for the touchdown. and many of them are transplanted Chicagoans and some of them have come down en route to a cruise in the Caribbean and they're getting their fun early today. Let's look at it from ground level. The fake to the outside, nothing more than a good surge by the middle of the bear line. Maybe the best in the game and Mike Tomczak easily into the end zone. That's the safest way to do it. Nobody handles the ball except the quarterback. 
And Kevin Butler, who has just missed one conversion this year out of 22 attempts, Steve Fuller is holding. And the Bears, with nine minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter, have forged in front of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 7 0. Scoring drive, and last week the Bears scored on the opening possession for the first time this year. And now they've done it again, and the key man, Walter Payton, in the biggest play involving Walter Payton for the Chicago Bears this year. His previous play was a 41 yard rush, and Payton went 30 yards on a pass play. But Walter, the key man, and the Bears made a habit of scoring on first possessions last year and done it here. Kevin Butler kicking off. And it's fielded there. Bobby Howard, who brings it out to the 25-yard line, and Steve Young will run the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with his team trailing 7-0. The defense for Chicago, Dan Hampton, Steve McMichael, William Perry, who slowed with a knee injury, and Richard Dent. Al Harris starts at linebacker for Otis Wilson, Ron Rivera for Mike Singletary and Wilbur Marshall. The secondary, Mike Richardson, Vesty Jackson, the rookie, Dave Dewerson, and Gary Fensick are the safeties. First and 10 at the 25. James Wilder on the first play of the game gets a couple to the 27 yard line and the rest of the Tampa Bay offense and they like to use one back. Jerry Bell is a move in. Gerald Carter, Leonard Harris are the wide receivers. Calvin McGee the tight end. Rob Taylor, George Yarno, Randy Grimes, Sean Farrell and Ron Heller. The rest of the offensive line. Second and seven at the 28, Steve Young, who has more touchdowns rushing than touchdowns passing this year. And Young is going deep. And just past the outstretched arms of Leonard Harris. And covering on the play was Vesty Jackson, a man that I think the Buccaneers are going to work on today. I don't think that's in question. Vesty Jackson, the younger of the uh, Bear cornerbacks. Mike Richardson on the other side is a four-year guy, and Jackson, just a rookie. But the thing you have to keep in mind is that it takes a big play by wide receivers to beat this Bear defense. And there's so much pressure put on the cornerbacks because, oh, say 60% of the time, they're forced into man coverage. And that time, Tampa Bay wasted an excellent opportunity as Harris was at least two yards by Vesty Jackson. Third down and seven at the 28, and David Williams, ex-Bear rookie, is in as a third wide receiver. And Young swings it out to Wilder, and a fine defensive play by Wilbur Marshall. Back to the original line of scrimmage, a loss of three on the play, and it'll be fourth down, and Frank Garcia will come in and kick it away for the Buccaneers. Well, you know, with Mike Singletary out of the game, Otis Wilson out of the game, that Wilbur Marshall must be feeling like, as the lone remaining linebacker, he's got more pressure on him today than he customarily does. At that time, he served notice that he's here. Lou Barnes goes back for Chicago. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go, first quarter. Seven to nothing, the Bears. here in sunny Tampa where the Bears lead the Buccaneers 7 to nothing with that much time remaining in the first quarter. Mike Tomczak making his third start had an impressive preseason and was not impressive in starting games against the Eagles and the Packers and was two for eight in relief of Steve Fuller against the Rams on Monday night. Calvin Thomas number 33 replaces Matt Suey as Mike Ditka said he would alternate tight ends and running backs. Suey and Thomas, Moorhead and Reitman. And Reitman is in there. First and 10 at the 43. And it's going to be Calvin Thomas. Thomas gets to the 47. Chris Washington on the tackle. Calvin Thomas 
averaging three yards a carry a little more than Matsui. Second down and four. Bears have lost two out of their last three after dropping only one game in 19 last season. First down into Tampa Bay territory at the 42 yard line and it's Vito McKeever and Irvin Randall combining to make the tackle. I wonder how Walter Payton runs when Walter isn't hurt. I mean if you would, if anybody can tell me that there's something wrong with Walter Payton I'd like to know what it is. He had some problems with a toe but he appears to be everything close to 100 percent today. Well if he has a, a true dislocated big toe it'd be tough for him to play at all would it. Well they're calling it a, bis, a dislocated big toe but it's the joint farther up the toe. It's not exactly the joint where it hinges to the foot itself. I don't think anybody could play if they had a, a truly dislocated big toe. It's, it's a question of terminology. Calvin Thomas gets tripped up and a penalty marker is down and a fumble on the play. We'll wait for the official signal. Tampa Bay recovers the ball but there was a flag and coming out of the pack was Randall. But let's wait for the call. And that will nullify a turnover offsides against the Buccaneers. And that's the kind of events that happen to losing teams. Lehman Bennett full note. Number 41 defense. Still first down. That's Craig Swope, the strong safety. We can see it right at the bottom of our screen right here. Craig Swope is on the line of scrimmage as he go across before the ball is snapped. Let's take a look. Well, he didn't move before the snap of the football, so his foot must have been in the neutral zone. And boy, that, that's a type of mistake you just can't have. A defensive back called for being offsides. So the Buccaneers have lost a sack and a fumble recovery. Trailing 7 0. It's first and five for the Bears on the Tampa Bay 37. Play action and a good fake by Tom Zach. Plenty of time for Willie Gall. Touchdown, Chicago. Tomzak's first touchdown pass of the season. It's play action, and the only reason Mike Tomzak threw that football is because he felt like it, because he saw Galt come open. One on one with Craig Curry, but Tampa Bay with zero pass rush gives Tomzak all the time in the world to find Willie Galt clear down at the goal line. And naturally, Willie Galt is the kind of a receiver you always want to throw to, but I think that Jim McMahon last year liked. Dennis McKinnon better. I think that there's a greater rapport with Tom Zach and Willie Gore. Well, he's the kind of receiver that uh, just gives a quarterback so much confidence. But that was offensive line confidence that resulted in that touchdown. Kevin Butler on the conversion and it's 14 to nothing Chicago. Let's take a look at Willie Gold isolated on the play. He's lined up on Rod Jones, but they're playing a zone defense. He just breaks the middle. And by the time Craig Curry realizes he's got to go with golf, there's no way he's going to make up the distance. So Tom Zach off of the play action here in Tampa. 14 nothing early. So far have been Chicago Bears big plays. If they lead 14 to nothing, Kevin Butler kicking off to Bobby Howard and Bobby Futrell. Futrell four yards in the end zone, downs it there. So if the Bears with the early big lead, perhaps we might see the NFL debut of Doug Flutie, who's been working hard, and he says he knows the offense full well. And Tom Zach, of course, not only his first touchdown pass this year, but first of his career. And I'm sure he's got to feel a little bit better in this year. And you have to wonder about Tampa Bay. Every reference to the Bears this week as they've gotten ready for this game has been about the banged up Bears. The man won't be here. The Singletary's not going to play. That Otis Wilson is out. That Peyton is hurt. And you have to wonder if maybe Tampa Bay just thought maybe they were playing the team that just wouldn't be able to compete today. What a mistake that's turned out to be early. First and 10 on the 20. Steve Young steps up and completes his pass. Gerald Carter at the 25 yard line and they rule it trapped incomplete. Carter is the only experienced wide receiver that the Buccaneers have now that Kevin House was dropped in that big purge a couple of weeks ago when Kevin House tight end Jimmy Giles and running back Ron Springs were dropped. Let's look at the very end of that play from behind. Can we see. No we can't see underneath Gerald Carter to see if the football made contact with the field. All we can see though is that the official 
was in the proper position along the sidelines and he made the call immediately. Second down and 10. Well now we have to wonder are we getting a replay. Dick Jorgen that means he wants a 30 second clock reset back up to 30 seconds. There was no indication that they were communicating with the videotape people upstairs and certainly uh, you saw the replay they saw and it was inconclusive. They did look at it though. Second down. Well they saw what we saw and that means that we couldn't tell if he caught it or not. So in that case the officials call stands if you can't overrule it from the booth it's inconclusive and the officials ruling is the one we play with. Ball is at the 20 yard line 625 to go in the first quarter the Bears lead at 14 nothing. Young in trouble and completes the pass to James Wilder on his way down he didn't pick up much maybe a yard and that's all but Young was headed for a sack and got it off sideways and Steve McMichael with good pressure on Young. Very close to being in the grasp that time was Steve Young. But nonetheless, he did get the ball away. And the Bear linemen were talking yesterday about what a disciplined pass rush they have to have. They're not so worried about Steve Young beating them, throwing the football. He doesn't have the cannon for an arm that some of his class did coming in the NFL. But he's got the legs. He can run better than anybody. Third down and eight at the 22. Williams is the third wide receiver. Young over the middle hits Bell. Bounces off defenders and has a Tampa Bay first down at the 34. Besty Jackson and Dave Doerson on the play. 11 yard pickup. And the hit was made short of a first down, but good second effort this time by Jerry Bell. The U back in motion all alone, but Wilbur Marshall, rather than wrapping up, just hits Jerry Bell and then he's wiped off by Todd Bell. And a good second effort, and we've got a Tampa first down. And their first first down of the ball game, and it comes with 5:05 remaining in the first quarter. James Wilder, and Wilder gets beyond the 35, a pickup of about three. William Perry on the tackle. Right now for an NFL Today report, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Brent. Well, Dick, you and Dan covered that great Washington game last week. Now, Jay Schrader turns a corner back around, and suddenly at 7-6, Dick, Max, and Dejas just missed another extra point. 7-6 Green Bay. Back to Dick. Well, thank you, Brent. There's got to be a lot of pressure on Max and Dejas' shoulder. He's missed too many conversions. I'm sure Mark Moser's watching. Second down and seven at the 36. Wilder hit by Perry and dropped at the 40. Ron Rivera also in on the play and it'll be third down and three for Tampa Bay. Ron Rivera taking the place of Mike Singletary made his first start against the Lions and led them in tackles in the one game that Singletary had to sit out. And we remember Ron Rivera from when he was drafted back in 1984. The defensive coordinator then a fellow by the name of Buddy Ryan had lots of kind things to say about Ron Rivera. He was just warming up to talk about the refrigerator. He didn't think much of Rivera being drafted in the second round. Third and three for Tampa Bay. And they give it to Wilder, and James Wilder is open. Bestie Jackson brings him down. But not before Wilder springs loose for 33 yards and a first down in Bear territory. Let's take a look up close. James Wilder is going to challenge the middle. A simple trap play. George Yarno with the trap block. Wilder goes to the outside. Harris misses the tackle and away he goes. Not the breakaway speed that a lot of running backs in this game have. But nonetheless James Wilder comes up with a big play. And boy did Tampa need that desperately. First and ten at the Bear 27 yard line. Young to throw on first down. Next route run by Leonard Harris. It'll be second down and they'll talk about that. But more on Wilder. Wilder is not compiling the same kind of numbers he has in the last two years and I think he'd like to be involved more. Well it's a new offense here in Tampa Bay. It was strictly 
the one back offense and that one back was James Wilder I, I think back to 1984 where he carried the ball 407 times in one season and that's an NFL record you look at him going into this game where he's only carried it 118 I mean he's down to like a third or less of what he has been doing he says that he'd like to have it every time he's one of those guys he's not afraid of the work second down and ten young ducks it off to Wilder and Wilder gets inside the 25 it'll be third and long for Tampa Bay as Ron Rivera again makes the stop Wilder owns nearly every Tampa Bay rushing record for a game a season and a career and when we talked to him yesterday I liked what he said about the fact that well you know it's it's discouraging that we seem to rebuilding be rebuilding again here in Tampa Bay but he said make no mistake about it unlike some players who want to move on when they see another program is getting started he said I'm a buck I'm here for the long haul I know the fans here in the Bay Area really appreciate that third and seven at the twenty four. Incomplete. Leonard Harris was the intended receiver. It'll be fourth down, and Donald Igwe BK will come in and try to give Tampa Bay some points now. So Steve Young. And the big play there was a 33 yard run by Wilder. Igwe BK has missed four. His longest was from 50, and this will be a 42 yard attempt. Steve DeBerg, the backup quarterback, holds. Kick is good. A 42 yard field goal by Donald Igwe BK out of Clemson, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the board, but still trail the Chicago Bears 14 to 3, 148 remaining in the opening quarter. Let's go back to the run by James Wilder that set up the field goal. George Yarno here is going to pull and trap on Steve McMichael. That's supposed to hit in here, but watch Wilder hit here, break to the outside after he sees his block on Ron Rivera in the middle by Sean Farrell, his right guard. See Farrell come down? He pins Rivera 59 to the inside, and that allows the big opening up the middle for James Wilder. Thomas Sanders, a yard in the end zone, returning the kickoff. Sanders, who had a tremendous game against the Rams, is brought down at the 22-yard line by Jeremiah Castile. Bears lead 14-3, and Mike Tomzak has already passed for 111 yards. That's five fewer than his career high against Philadelphia. And it may be the proper time for Tampa's defense to assert themselves. The last two times the Bears have had the ball, it's been right down the field like the 11 white shirts didn't have any idea what was going on. It's it's time for Tampa Bay to start playing some football or they're going to get run out of here early. Matt Suey joins Peyton in the backfield. And Tom Zach is going long on first down. And he was going for guess who? Willie Gall. Covered on the play by Rod Jones, the rookie from SMU and the number one draft pick by the Buccaneers. The key on this play is that Tom Zach has to keep the ball towards the sidelines. See, it's back towards the middle of the field, and Galt really doesn't have a play on the football. Again, Willie Galt went by Rod Jones. If that pass from Tom Zach is thrown higher and more towards the sideline, he's making that catch, and that would be that would be a long one, and Tom Zach knows it. A poorly thrown ball by Mike. Second and ten at the 22, 129 on the clock, first quarter. And it was nearly intercepted. Jones had a shot at it, and it was Lou Barnes, the intended receiver. Barnes at that time made his move towards the sidelines. Looked like Tomzak thought the ball was coming back towards the inside. Barnes here stops, then goes back outside, but Tomzak appears thought that he was going to continue his movement towards the middle of the field. Kirk Becker replaces Tom Thayer at right guard for the Bears at third and ten at the 22 yard line. Keith Ortigo and Dennis Gentry on one side, Galt on the other. Pressure on Tomzak. And the pass is knocked away and a fine defensive play. Receivers was shaken up. 
Barnes is still down on the field after that shot. Let's look at it from behind Tom Zach. This time this pass protection not so good forced him to move to the right. Looks like a well thrown ball but boy a fine play by Curry getting his hand on the football and Barnes making an effort rather that was uh, McKeever that got his hand on the football and Barnes laying out trying to pull it in takes a real shot. And it's obvious that the Bears are trying to take advantage of two rookies. Jones the number one pick in one corner Vito McKeever in his second NFL start out of the USFL and Craig Swope the strong safety who was a fourth round draft pick out of Illinois. But when you're rebuilding your defense and that's what the Buccaneers have to do you've got to go with young kids and take your chances. One nineteen on the clock and they're still working on Lou Barnes. We want to remind you that this is only the first half of our CBS doubleheader today. Coming up next will be the New York Giants against the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles want to make amends from an earlier loss at Giants Stadium. We'll see what Buddy Ryan has in mind defensively for Bill Parcells and the Giants. Lots of blitzing. I think we could assume that, but it's been Joe Morris that's been hurting everyone. And some of you may see the return of Joe Montana. What an incredible story that is after back surgery. Montana coming back against St. Louis Cardinals and Cliff Stout starting at quarterback for Gene Stallings. It was seven weeks ago that we were talking about maybe the end of the line for Joe Montana. That, that might have been the end of his career. And who can believe less than two months later starting against Cliff Stout and the Cardinals. That's Bobby Futrell who is back for Tampa Bay and Maury Buford hunting for the first time for Chicago. And it takes a bare roll and out of bounds at the 32 yard line. A 46 yard kick. We said it was hot 10 degrees hotter than normal here in Tampa on the field. <laughs> I'm glad we're up here and it's not so cool up here. We see it on the other side of 120 degrees down on the field and imagine how hot it would be if that was artificial turf. Mm. That's a natural grass field much cooler than AstroTurf. William Perry is going to lose a few pounds. Not enough, though, to make Mike Ditka happy today. <laughs> Mike Ditka unhappy that William Perry is 340 pounds plus. Ooh. Ooh. First and 10, Tampa Bay on the 32. James Wilder. Wilder picks up a couple of the 35. Mike Richardson on the tack. So the Buccaneers now have run 13 plays, and Mr. Wilder has been involved in eight of them. The one thing from Tampa's standpoint is you would think that the heat would be to their advantage having been down here working in this heat every day the Bears coming from a cooler climate. Lehman Bennett said at times he wonders if that doesn't work against his ball club that they've just conditioned themselves to pace their way through a very hot ball game. I know one thing for sure because of the heat and it may show up later in the ball game. It's it's really unfortunate they've spotted the Bears 14 points. Second down and seven. And a screen pass dangerous to Jerry Bell and right there was Al Harris who was playing for Otis Wilson and that's a dangerous pass and right on Steve Young is Richard Dent he'll come in from the right side of the screen jumps inside the block he forces a quick throw and Jerry Bell probably would have been better off if he'd have let that ball bounce out of his hands but it's tough to know that it's going to fall on the turf. It's ruled an incomplete pass and there's a man that is not made Mike Ditka happy at all. Richard Dent who is 11th in tackles only four sacks after leading the club last year. The difference is they haven't had the big lead in a lot of their games where you know the other team has no choice but to throw. Third and seven at the 35 and Young hits Gerald Carter who was hit by Gale and Fensick but held on to the ball for a Tampa Bay first down at the Chicago 46. And the final seconds elapse in the first quarter. 20 yard pickup. It's not often you see a receiver take a shot like this. The one that Gerald Carter is going to take from Gary Fensick and still hold on to the football. The key is to get your feet off of the ground. See Carter go up in the air. He doesn't have his feet on the ground when he's hit by Fensick. Thus he holds on to the football. And that is the end of the first quarter. 14 to 3 the score. Second quarter here at Tampa Stadium. Dick Stockton and Dan Deerdorf. Tampa Bay with a first down on the Bears 46, trailing Chicago 14 to 3. Young with a rollout. And Steve Young running for the 
first time today. And may have a first down for the Buccaneers. Ron Rivera and Richard Dent made the tackle close to a first down. Dan Hampton, the left defensive end, has the responsibility of containment. His job is to get upfield and not let Steve Young get to the outside. Let's watch Young on his movement. Now, this is going to be a designed rollout, but Hampton gets pinned to the inside initially. He's in a bad position. Yarno comes out, cuts him down. Hampton, look at him, though. He didn't realize that Steve Young still had the football. Standing around and watching, and Young goes ahead and makes a big play. Dan Hampton, I'm sure, would like to have that play over again. They missed the first down by a yard, and Young coming into the game second in rushing amongst quarterbacks behind Dave Archer of Atlanta. Wilder with Bell blocking. Loses the ball, and Wilbur Marshall is recovered for the Bears. The play was whistled dead, but Wilbur Marshall indeed recovered for the Chicago Bears as he stripped the ball away from James Wilder. <laughs> Talk about doing it all. This is the second time this season that Wilbur Marshall has not only made the hit, but he's also come up with the big play. Wilbur Marshall right here on the line of scrimmage. Watch him fight to the outside, get upfield. When Wilder goes past, he's going to reach in and strip out the football and recover it himself. Working to the outside, working to the outside, fighting through two blocks right here. He just takes the football out of James Wilder's arms and recovers it himself. Boy, there's not much more a guy can do by himself. Two weeks ago, he scored a touchdown after picking up a fumble. He also has an interception for a score this year. First and 10 Bears on their own 40. And they give it to Peyton. Van Horn blocking, and Peyton carries it to the 47-yard line, a gain of seven. Swope on the tackle for an NFL Today report. Quickly, let's go to Brent in New York. Brent. All right, Dick, well, you remember this man, Tommy Kramer. He could ignite a fire quicker than almost any quarterback in the NFC. Anthony Carter, 38 yards, set up a field goal. Vikes, 10, Lions, nothing. Back to Dick. And Brent Kramer and the Vikings have to be kicking themselves uh, after last week's loss. They could have been a game behind the Bears. And the Bears are uh, very thankful to the Skins for pulling one off in overtime. But well, when you've got athletes like the Bears have, it's easy to win. Second and three. And Walter Payton will lunge for the first down into Tampa Bay territory. Urban Randall on the tackle at the 48-yard line. And Walter Payton, who only gained 61 yards last week and had to leave the game in the second half against the Rams, has gained 36 so far. Keep thinking about the play made by Wilbur Marshall. A lot of orange shirts here in the crowd today and they they get their money's worth when they see one like see someone like a Wilbur Marshall Mike Dicka calls him by far and away the best athlete on my football team but when you strip it recover it yourself boy that's offensively you like to have a guy like that out on the field while you're on the bench first and ten at the 48 and this is a reverse and Willie Gall way back is brought down and a big play by Keith Brown But initially, it's set up by Tyrone Keyes, the defensive end to that side. Number 98, you see him? His job is to work upfield when it goes away. Make sure it's no reverse. He's the guy that forces Willie Galt 10 yards deeper than he wanted to go, and then Keith Browner finishes him off. But Tyrone Keyes, that time staying at home, makes a big play for the Bucks. Keyes is an ex-Chicago Bear. He is a big one at 6'7", originally with the Jets. And they bring him in for the pass rush. And it's so easy just to fly down the line of scrimmage and want to get into the play rather than honoring your responsibilities. Keys was there. A loss of 15 on the play. Second and 25. Back at the 37. Tom Zach's pass. Incomplete. And it was intended for Tim Wrightman. Bobby Futrell was the closest to him as Lehman Bennett has a whole slew of defensive backs in this situation. And on the sideline, and he's got to be gnashing his teeth, is Mike Singletary, who missed his first pro game against the Lions, has a full groin muscle, and he just doesn't want to be out of there. No, he does. He played last week in the game against the Rams on Monday night, but was pretty ineffective. And he's the kind of a guy that will never take himself out of the lineup. This is Mike Ditka's doing today. He said, Michael, I want you to get well, get healthy. We've got a lot of football still to play. That guy ought to take himself out of the lineup. <laughs> I think he did years ago. <laughs> Third and 25. And pressure on Tomzak. 
And his pass is tipped away and intercepted. Let's wait. Yes, intercepted. Ricky Eastman picked it off, and it was Ron Holmes who tipped it in the air for Tampa Bay. We have to keep in mind that Ron Holmes is a defensive end. Look at him pull off the line of scrimmage and run with Walter Payton. Rather than rushing the quarterback, Ron Holmes, a defensive end, off in coverage, tips the football, and Ricky Eastman dies and gets it before it hits the turf. And there's a, by the way, Dick, that's a page out of the Bears playbook. They dropped Richard Dent off in coverage. And shaken up is Eastman. Came out of the Buffalo game with a knee injury. First and ten for the Buccaneers on their own 48. Still trailing 14 to 3. James Wilder gets to midfield in a gain of two. Dan Hampton and Dave Duerson on the stop. And there's Eastman, who's still hurting. Turnovers will burn any coach, but at least Ditka has the lead, 14 to three, with plenty of time. 11:20 remaining in the first half. Second down and eight for Tampa Bay. Richardson defending on the play and Steve Young might have gotten hit after the throw but he's getting fairly good protection that time I thought it was very good protection from Young he runs forward and delivers a football and it's just a case of of throwing it too high Gerald Carter wide open on the play he found a soft spot in the seam but that time Young running forward flipped it too high and takes a shot in the midsection from Otis Wilson who's in the ball game did not start because of a sore knee and did not play in the second half against the Rams, but he's in there now. Third down and eight for the Buccaneers midfield. Young with three wide receivers goes to Jerry Bell. He's got it. First down, Bucks. And slow getting up is Bell. A gain of 26. Duerson and Marshall on the play. I think it's Wilbur Marshall who's going to run all the way with Jerry Bell. See Bell released to the inside. There goes Wilbur with him. Tries to hold on, but loses contact with Bell. And when Bell worked back to the inside, Wilbur lost him momentarily. Thus, he was open to make the catch. 10.43 to go, and they're tending to Jerry Bell. And when we come back, Tampa Bay will have a first and 10 on the Bears' 25. Ankle injury for Jerry Bell and a tough break for Bell who was the leading receiver last year for Tampa Bay when he went down with a knee injury. And uh, this is only his third start after being hurt early in the year. And he caught five passes in the previous two games. And an important move man, especially with Jimmy Giles no longer in the arsenal for the Buccaneers. And this is a tough blow. Lehman Bennett released both Jimmy Giles and Kevin House, the two biggest parts of their passing game here. And it's because of Jerry Bell and it's because of Calvin McGee and their progress. And well, you have to wonder now that McGee goes down. They've got KD Dunn in reserve, but boy, I mean, now that Jerry Bell is out, they're, they're thin. I mean, they've got now two guys for two positions. Tough situation for Jerry Bell. While we have a moment, we're going to remind you next Saturday, it's a big day of college football action on CBS Sports, starting with a big Big Ten battle. We'll have Wisconsin hosting Ohio State, and that's after losing their first two games of the season. The Buckeyes now eight in a row, and they're looking to win the Big Ten. They'll go head-to-head -head with Michigan in a while. And that's going to be the national game, and then you'll see UCLA against Washington or Clemson, the Atlantic Coast Conference leader, against Maryland. Check your local listings for the games in your area. That's next Saturday on CBS Sports and an interesting feature in the Clemson Maryland game. Yeah it may catch on. How about no head coach on the sideline. Danny Ford and Bobby Ross both will be up in the press box. They're banished from the field for Bobby Ross a week ago chasing an official uh, and a year ago Danny Ford in this same game having some problems. So that'll be uh, the first time no head coach on the sidelines. They will be able by the way to be up in the press box and they'll be on headphones down to the sidelines. So it won't be quite that traumatic.
And they're going to make sure everything is all set before they take Jerry Bell off the field. Wilbur Marshall already has made some something happen today with a fumble recovery. The time of possession is about as close as you could want. And a hand for Jerry Bell as he goes out and Pat Franklin who is a rookie out of Southwest Texas State number 35 who is the seventh round draft pick by the Cincinnati Bengals will replace Jerry Bell in the U back position. Bears lead 14 to 3 Mike Tomzak with a one yard plunge on a 92 yard drive and then Tomzak hit Willie Galt with a 37 yard touchdown strike his first career touchdown throw. It was 14 nothing Bears before Igwe Bike connected on a field goal to put Tampa Bay on the board. Right here it's first and 10 bucks on the Bear 25. Young stepping up his arm was hit and they're going to rule it a fumble and recovered by Tampa Bay's Wilder with Otis Wilson all over there but it was Richard Dent who came in strong. Richard Dent will come from the top of the screen and he's going to get a hand from behind working against number 72 Rob Taylor he collapses him in dives for the ball and Young has no idea where it is. Luckily recovered by Tampa Bay or that was a free football. And a loss of four on the play second and 14 back to the 29 9 45 remaining first half. at the 39 yard line so the Bucks going in the opposite way and Richard Dent I think is shaken up Richard Dent is shaken up William Perry may have made contact with Richard Dent watch William Perry loop Ron Rivera is Ron Rivera is going to take a blitz the middle linebacker is going to blitz working up here by Buck Michael Perry is going to come all the way around and he's going to take a shot on the head of Steve Young but let's see if he hits Richard Dent after the play here he comes whoa look out Steve Young Yes it is Perry that makes contact with Richard Dent and Dent still down on the football field so everybody goes down when the fridge is back there. Now Dent is just about getting to his feet now and uh, working on his neck a little bit Rivera made the tackle Richard Dent shaken up still massaging the back of his head as he goes out of the ball game. And there's the fridge. And boy, he is a big fridge. <laughs> when you start talking about 340 pounds packed onto one frame, keep in mind now he's not six foot seven. Look at this Perry at six two, and he may not be that tall. That's compact, stout. Now it's third and 24, back at the 39. They've lost 19 yards on this series. And Young. Stumbles his way, doesn't get much <laughs> to the 41. Steve McMichael made first contact on Young, who now is feeling the pain of the Chicago Bears defensive pressure. One of the things that is going on is that the Bears are substituting their defensive linemen. Watch the pass rush. They're, they're lined up in the straight 4-3. Only the four. Hartenstein is into the ball game here. Hampton's moved back to the inside. Let's watch the Bear pass rush. Let's take a look at it. McMichael doing a little spin but it's no stunts or anything up front but McMichael has Young wrapped up and lets him get away but that was good pass protection. Steve Young obviously couldn't find anyone open or he should have thrown the ball. Garcia going for the sideline. Barnes is back and instead let's see where it went out of bounds. And it went out of bounds at the six yard line. Good kick by Garcia who's been struggling lately. And with 8.36 remaining in the first half, the Bears have a long way to go. Tampa Stadium, Dick Stockton and Dan Deardorff, and a lot of questions surrounding the Bears, who have lost two of their last three games, but they have answered to the affirmative so far as they lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 14-3 here, and the Buccaneers are trying to get their program going, having won only their second game last week. And the Bears scored the first two times they had the football since then. The Buccaneers defensively have settled down here. They're making Chicago start with their back to the end zone. They're on the six yard line. Walter Payton right. And Payton slides his way for a good yardage. 
Irvin Randall on the stop right now for an NFL Today report. Here again is Brent Musburger. And Dick, the New Orleans Saints trying to score first on the Los Angeles Rams. Wilson has got Eric Martin over the middle, and Martin breaks free, only Gray to stop him. That is face mask on the receiver. He fumbles, recovered by Irvin, and the Rams have the ball. Let's go back to Dick. All right, Brent. Peyton gaining eight yards on the carry. It's four, second down and two at the 14-yard line. Alvin Thomas in motion. And Peyton cuts in and gets the first down. To the 24-yard line, Chris Washington on the stop, a gain of 10. And this is the kind of football that Mike Ditka likes the best. The Bears like to pull their offensive linemen, get as many people to the point of attack as they possibly can. Some running backs can't handle having that many people of their jersey color out in front of them. They get confused. They're not quite sure how to make a move, but not the case with Walter Payton. That's when he's at his best, and we're just seeing him crank off yardage, looking like there's nothing at the line of scrimmage, stopping, darting back to the inside, and picking up some big chunks of yardage. 54 yards on eight carries for Walter. First and 10 Chicago on their 24. Gets the call again. Up the middle to the 30-yard line. A gain of six that time. Kevin Murphy and Irvin Randall make the tackle. And Tom Thayer, who came out of the ball game, replaces Kurt Becker at right guard for Chicago. With seven minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. Buccaneer mistakes have hurt their cause. A face mask on a sack. Deep in Tampa Bay territory, a lost fumble recovery, and then a James Wilder fumble himself. Second and three at the 31. Inside handoff to Calvin Thomas. Shy of a first down. Chris Washington and Bob Nelson on the tackle, and they're missed it by about a yard. Misdirection that time to Thomas. Walter Payton flaring to the right, but now the play comes in from the sidelines. Is he going to have Tom Zach put it on the air with a yard or less? What do you think, Dick? Well, I think Mike Diffie likes grinded out yardage. <laughs> I he's think got, so, too. He's got Tim Reitman <laughs> as his second tight end. He'd be uncharacteristic, Ditka, wouldn't it, if he uh, did throw it? I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> Keep in mind, this drive started from the six-yard line. He did not make it. Jeff Davis, who leads the Buccaneers in tackles, was right there. And it's fourth down. Good defense by Tampa Bay. And the Bear players still good enough. Let's take a look at Jeff Davis right here, how he's going to fill his scrape and fill the hole, make the play on Walter Payton. Jeff Davis, read, read, finds the opening. Bortz can't get on him, but he's into the backfield. And Walter never had a shot at that one. Looks like everyone on the Tampa defense knew that they were going to run the ball as well. Laurie Buford punting for the second time, and Bobby Futrell back at the 25 for Tampa Bay. Good kick. High and long. Fair catch called for by Futrell inside the 20. And Buford did his job in spades. A 49-yard punt. 5.45 remaining in the first half. The Bears lead. For Tampa Bay is Steve DeBerg, the veteran who started the first two games of the season and has given way now to Steve Young. Well, he started the first two games, but that wasn't by design. It was Steve Young's job going into training camp. Uh, Lehman Bennett put Young in there for the tail end of last year. He started the last four games, but then he just fell apart in the preseason. And DeBerg started the first couple. Young settled down. And as he said, I was guilty of trying to do too much. When you're an athlete of this caliber, sometimes that'll happen to you. First and 10 at the 19. Pressure completes to Wilder. And Wilder will have the first down beyond the 30-yard line. Wilbur Marshall puts a stamp on and a pickup of 12 yards. I don't know if there's a worse combination than being a defensive lineman wearing a dark jersey in a hot stadium chasing Steve Young. Just look how nimble he is afoot that time. Moving to his right, but being left-handed, he's able to make a soft toss that time to James Wilder. And it's it's going to be a fatiguing afternoon for the Bear defensive lineman trying to horse collar Steve Young. Wilder was out two games with a bruised sternum. An outstanding receiver as well.
well. First and ten at the 32. Young running for his life. Otis Wilson chasing him, and a fine tackle by Otis Wilson brings Young down close to the 40-yard line. Otherwise, Young would have had a first down easily. One of the things that makes you run really fast, like Otis Wilson, watching Blitz at the bottom of the screen, he's going to get caught to the inside. Young breaks contained. Now, he knows he's beaten. He knows he's made a mistake. I think that adds a couple seconds to your, to your speed. Boy, that's really something, Otis Wilson catching Steve Young from behind. But the whole Bear defensive team, Dick, is sprinkled with that kind of athlete. Unbelievable athletic types that can run down quarterbacks from behind. Second and two. Still picked up eight. And Wilder will try to do the rest. Lunges forward. It'll be very close. Dan Hampton at the shoe tops. And Wilder may be shy by just a little bit. Under four minutes remaining in the first half. And Dick Jorgensen wants to measure it here. Bears lead 14 to 3, scoring the first two times they had the ball. Tom Zack with a one yard plunge. And a 37 yard pass to Willie Gall. How close is it? About an inch. About, that's about what it is. That's exactly what it is. Almost a free down here for Tampa because I'd have to think that they can even. I'd, uh, down 14 to 3, you're playing the world champions. Don't you think that even if it was fourth down and an inch, that they might go for it here? Yes. Although. If he doesn't, and it's 21 to three, <laughs> you know, oh, I know, you I know, know. We can leave town after this game. Oh, you're right. I mean, you're, you're in your own territory. It's not as easy as we make it sound. But still, if I'm Tampa Bay, I have nothing to lose. So it's third and one. Two tight ends in there for the Buccaneers, and Young will have the first down for the quarterback seat. The best way to get a first down. And the crowd shows its approval. And the ball at the 43 yard line. Steve Young, as everyone knows by now in the world who follows football, a descendant of Brigham Young himself. Rick Mallory has gone in for George Yarno at left guard. Mallory, number 68. First and 10 Buccaneers on their own 43, under three minutes to go now. Young looking one way and completes the pass to Calvin McGee. The first reception for the big and we emphasize big tight end. Ron Rivera on the stop. They list him at 240. He's closer to 250 Calvin McGee. And yet for a man his size he really has a fine understanding of the passing game. Able to run routes and has soft hands. And when you've got that kind of a combination you're a formidable threat to any linebacker that has to go on one on one coverage with you. That time it was Ron Rivera. Scored a touchdown in his first National Football League play against the Bears last year. Picked up six, second and four, just shy of midfield. And the blitz is picked up by Wilder, and the pass is caught at the 41 by Gerald Carter. Bestie Jackson on the stop, and credit Wilder on a big block. Wilbur Marshall is going to come on the blitz. Wilbur Marshall will blitz to the inside. Here's Wilbur. Watch how he's met in the backfield by James Wilder. Gerald Carter is going to read that it's a blitz. He'll break off his pattern. Right there, the block by Wilder gives Young the time. Carter broke off his pattern, and it's a first down. You see, that's a blitz adjustment. Vesty Jackson playing to the inside. When Carter saw Marshall come, he knows that whatever route he had on is off. He runs a shorter pattern, and Young has time to deliver the football. And now Young has time to talk things over with Lehman Bennett at the sidelines. We have our two-minute warning here as it's gotten overcast in Tampa with the Bears leading. Thank you. And Tampa Bay, like Chicago, with three timeouts remaining, first and ten on the Bears' 40. In motion is Pat Franklin. Wilder, penalty marker down, and Wilder is shoved back after picking up two yards by Richard Dent. The penalty will be against the Bears. Offside, number 89, defense, still first up. 
I think it's 99, Dan Hampton. Dan, I don't think, yeah, it's Dan wonderful. Hampton. Dan Hampton right here at the bottom of the screen is lined up. Look at his left arm right here. He's lined up across the football. He was about a half a yard in front of Steve McMichael, who was immediately to his right. And I don't think Keith Ortigo, the wide receiver, <laughs> would have uh, called for being offsides defensively. As you can see, kind of a penalty-free first half. So it's first and five for the Buccaneers on the 35. Young going for Carter, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Vesty Jackson, and simply that pass was just too short. They've been faking the blitz all day, the Chicago Bears, with Dave Dorsen up here at the top. This time he's going to come. Well, he's going to fake it, then he comes back out, rather. But what happens is when Steve Young throws this football, he's thinking blitz, and what he does is he releases it before his man has made it. Now watch, when Carter never moves by Vesty Jackson, the ball's in the air right now, and Jackson had five yards positioning on Carter. He plays the ball. Carter has no idea that it's been thrown that early. And the second interception of the year for Vesty Jackson, the rookie from Washington who made his first NFL start last Monday. And coming into the game, Steve Young had the lowest interception rate in the NFC. But he throws his third interception of the year, and the Bears have it on their one-yard line. Dorson being there on the line of scrimmage, faking the blitz, forces Young to throw it really out of his rhythm. 145 remaining first half. Tom Zach to throw. And Willie Gold was the intended receiver. Rod Jones was covering, but Chris Washington was out there covering, too, and the ball might have hit his helmet. This is what the Bears have done with their two possessions, first two of this half, and they made good, and then things got a little tight for them. Punt, interception, punt, and we've watched Mike Tomzak in the passing game here in the second quarter. He's been repeatedly throwing behind receivers. That time a good couple of yards behind called on the simple break-in. He's missed his last six. Second and ten. Tomzak hits Reitman. And he's driven back. And the forward progress was the two-yard line. Craig Swope thought maybe the Buccaneers should have a safety, but that's not the way it is, and they'll mark it at the two. And even that ball floats a little bit on Mike Tomzak as he throws it out. Watch how high it is. Reitman has to go way up to make the catch. And even though the penalty, I mean, the uh, contact was made on the two, and Swope drove him into the end zone, that's a good call. You get the forward progress as a receiver. And now a timeout is called, and there's Ditka yelling at Mike Tomzak. So he doesn't like what he's seeing either. Well, he doesn't know why on that pass pattern you go ahead and throw it to a guy who's standing on the two-yard line who's covered. I mean, that is just flirting with disaster. What if Reitman doesn't come down with the high ball, just tips it, it goes up in the air, and Swope just walks into the end zone with it? From behind Mike Tomzak, low angle in the end zone. Absolutely no pressure up in the middle, but look how high he throws the pass. And mm. Tim Reitman did a superior job just coming down with the football. If he tips that, or there's just too many things that can go wrong when you throw a pattern on your own two yard line. So Tom Zach just got a little tongue lashing from the coach and now goes back to the huddle. And Tampa Bay now with two timeouts remaining and wisely called it. With 131 remaining, uh, they're looking if they can hold the Bears. Without a first down, a good field position. Well, what do you call if you're Mike Ditka? First down pass is thrown behind Willie Galt. The second down pass is thrown high. Here's a situation where you ought to throw the football, but do you have confidence enough in your quarterback to call? Tyrone Keyes, the pass rusher, is in for Tampa Bay as well as Carl Morgan. Four down linemen on third down and nine. And the pass up the middle, and it's caught by Reitman. And a first down for Reitman who nearly didn't have control of the ball. Up to the 25, Eastman on the stop. And you have to admire the Bears. You have to admire the Bears going with their game plan. But look at the protection afforded Tom Zach as he again finds an open man, Reitman this time. No one within 10 yards of month. You have to assume that in some shape, manner, or form, Tampa Bay blew their pass coverage. And now the Bears will call a timeout because it the shoe's on the other foot, and Mike Dick is looking at possible field goal range before this half is history. And a big play by Reitman, who has figured in the tight end picture because of his blocking in recent games. 
Well, the way the Bears have been moving the ball offensively, that's for a guy who just gave his quarterback a tongue lashing on the sidelines. This is a real turnabout in confidence now. If, if he thinks in a minute and 16 seconds that they're going to move 50 yards down the field and get into field goal range. This, of course, you know what this is? This is really good practice. Let's see how Tom Zach moves the offense under a pressure situation. If they're going to try for points, that's what it'll be. Looking at the field, you'd think that the Bears need 42 yards for a 50 yard attempt by Butler, as long as this year was 52, but that's looking way ahead. First and 10, Chicago on their 25, 116 on the clock. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Tom Zach pumps and gets it into the hands of Peyton. And Peyton is down just shy of the 30 by Jeff Davis. The clock runs. And the Bears want to line up in a hurry. Now under a minute. Second and five. Tom Zach has golf and a first down out of bounds. Let's see if it stops the clock. It does. 42 seconds to the Bear 42. That was good for 12 yards. And a good throw by Mike Tomzak. When you're in this situation, the one thing you can't give up is the big play, and that's where the cornerbacks, in this particular case, McKeever, is going to give someone like, like Willie Gault all sorts of room. You're going to let him break that pattern off 10, 12 yards underneath you. You don't think that's going to hurt you. You just can't give up the one big play. There's the time. It's first and 10 Bears on their 42-yard line, leading 14-3. to three. All the scoring early. And inside handoff to Peyton. And Peyton with great moves gets into Tampa Bay territory and another first down to the 46 yard line. He picked up 12. Stops the clock with a Chicago timeout as Craig Swope made the stop on the great Walter. Well how about the bear play selection Dick. The way they're working around involving everyone in the offense. Willie Galt gets in on it. Reitman is in on it. Now Walter Peyton not only in a screen pass but now on a play up the middle. This is brilliant play calling. Timeout story, and the Bears have only one, and they're getting closer to field goal range. And there's Doug Flutie, number two, who's hoping he can make his NFL debut today. And the bigger the lead, the better his chance, I would suppose. Yeah, you know he's rooting for the Bears to ring the bell a little bit. I don't know how big a margin that it would have to be to see Doug Flutie, but there's no question about it that Ditka has said that he would play Doug Flutie if the lead is big enough. Well, coming up at halftime, Ali Sherman joins Brandon Irv back in New York, and they'll get you up to date with all the scores and highlights from around the league. And from holdout to silent hero, Joe Morris, the big reason behind the Giants' success. And Butler will have that story. It's all coming up at halftime. Peyton has gained 73 yards on 11 carries. First and 10 at the Tampa Bay 45. Tomzak with good protection. And a tremendous catch by Dennis Gentry. And Gentry has it inside the 10 yard line. Curry on the stop. What a catch and run by Gentry. 37 yards. And the man he victimized is Rod Jones. Jones went for the interception rather than making the hit on Gentry. As we watch Tom Zach just throw the ball into the ground. Let's watch the reception by Dennis Gentry. He's working one on one with Rod Jones and we're going to watch Jones number 22 make a play on the ball rather than making the play on Gentry. There is Jones. See him go in front of Gentry for the ball. Boy that's a mistake you can't afford to make. And Gentry keep in mind a former running back scary when he has the football after the catch and Rod Jones a rookie makes a rookie mistake you must play the man you can't play the football unless you're 100 percent sure that you're either going to bat it away or come down with the interception second and goal from the eight Tom Zach drills it incomplete 
Willie Galt, the res tended receiver, Ron Jones, was covering him. And keep in mind that this drive for the Bears started on their own one-yard line. The clock didn't move. Watch this. At least Rod Jones didn't decide that I'm going to have to play passive after getting burned. That's superior coverage on Willie Galt, but, boy, that's the longest uh, non-movement of the clock. Seven seconds when the play started, seven seconds when it ended. And we'll have a little conversation about this. Kevin Butler is coming in the ballgame. As we look at it again, look at the coverage by Jones. He did have his right hand on Willie Galt's back. But he didn't make the body move, and he was playing the football, so no flag. The Bears called their last time out just to settle things down for Kevin Butler, who will come in to kick the field goal. And uh, seven seconds still show on the scoreboard, and we know there's less time than that. Well, are they saying that they called the timeout before the snap of the ball? That's got to be the only reason why we still have seven seconds. But Fuller will be in to hold for Butler. And he can establish a Bears record. Yeah, so that play never happened. So I guess the whistle blew, but no one on the field nor anywhere else heard the whistle for the timeout. That play never existed. So now Butler, whose 13 consecutive field goals ties his own club record set a year ago, will try to break it here. And seven seconds on the clock. 25-yard attempt. And the kick is good. So Butler has kicked 14 in a row to break his own record. And the Bears lead it 17-3 to with three seconds remaining in the first half. Good look at Mike Ditka. When you're this far ahead, it's it's nice to have points. Keep in mind, though, that this was a drive that, in some ways, maybe couldn't have happened if Mike Ditka wouldn't have decided to give Mike Tomzak an opportunity to see what he could do. They were deep in their own territory, just a little over a minute to play, and he decided, what the heck, let's see what Tomzak can do. And after throwing four or five poor passes in a row. That was a pretty good drive by Mike Tomczak. And the big play was the pass over the middle to a wide open Tim Reitman for 23 yards, and that put the Bears in business. And then the mistake by Jones, allowing the catch and long run by Dennis Gentry. Those two big plays cost Tampa three points. At the beginning of this game, and of course it's by no means over, 17 to three, and things have happened in the league. You talked about how emotion realistically has to play a big role for Tampa Bay and emotion goes really only so far. Well they're certainly not going to beat the Bears going head to head on talent. If that's the only criteria that's going to have any sort of an effect on the scoreboard Tampa Bay is in real trouble but playing at home in front of this big crowd I would have thought that they wouldn't have allowed the Bears to get off to those two quick early touchdowns. It's awful tough to beat this team from Chicago operating from a 14 point deficit. Bobby Howard and Bobby Futrell are deep for Tampa Bay. And Butler's kick lands out of the end zone. And the Buccaneers will take over on the 20 yard line with three seconds to go. And a very impressive first half, despite a few lapses for Mike Tomzak, who completed five of seven for 78 yards and his first NFL touchdown pass to Willie Gall. And coming up next, the New York Giants in Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Check your local listings and some of the country will see the San Francisco 49ers against the Cardinals and the unbelievable return of Joe Montana. 49ers in a dogfight. They're tied with Atlanta, second place behind the Rams, who just beat the Bears on Monday. And that's a tight divisional race indeed. Ball at the 20-yard line. Young. Up in the air to a lot of receivers. And it actually hit off of Dave Williams. But that'll do it for the first half. So Mike Tomzak starting his third game as engineer the Chicago Bears to a 17-3 lead over the upstart Tampa Bay Buccaneers at halftime. Again. And he 
is tripped up, and a penalty marker is down. It was Craig Curry, the free safety, who tripped up Peyton. It looked like he could get a few more yards. And it'll be against the Bears. A tripping call against Chicago. Let's get the call from Dick Jorgensen, who got caught. One thing, the players are getting a break with the sun going behind the clouds. It was 120 degrees, actually more than 120 on the field earlier. It's cooled off some. That has to be a plus for the Bears. Tripping, number 57, offense, 10 yards, still second down. Tom Thayer, the right guard, and the strongest of the Bears up front. He'll be the left-hand side of our screen. Can we pick it up? Boy, it's tough to see right there. He's actually blocking on Craig Curry. They are already down on the ground. Curry went over the top and made the play, but yet he was flagged for tripping. I couldn't see it there. Maybe it happened before that. Second down and 15. Back at the 41 of the Bears. Tom Zach dumps it off to Walter Payton, and Payton gets away from a tackler. David Logan. Adam once and Peyton got away and brings it out to the 49 yard line where Chris Washington makes the stop. The guy who can read the screen easier than anyone is the nose tackle because he knows something's wrong. The offensive linemen are all soft and they turn and run. Dave Logan coming in from the left of your screen reads it perfectly. He has Peyton in the backfield but can't bring Walter down. Just loses his grip slides off. Boy a lot of people have made that trip sliding down Walter Peyton's legs. <laughs> It's Watch like, him gain and more yardage. It's like going down the banister on Christmas Day. Third down and eight. Bears still in their own territory. And Tom Zach lost it high for Dennis Gentry and nearly picked off by Craig Curry. It'll be fourth down. Behind flawless pass protection, Gentry with a step on his man, but because so much arc on the ball and because it was thrown so far he gives an opportunity for the free safety to get in on the play. Tom Zach at times just doesn't seem to have a real soft touch on the deep passing game. Bobby Futrell. Single safety and Maury Buford has had an outstanding day kicking for the Bears. Gets off another good one and a fair catch is called. And it stops right there, and the Bears are going to have to have a, get a big edge there. It's down at the six. 48-yard kick, and it dropped right there. And Dan Deerdorf here early in the third quarter with the Bears leading the Buccaneers 17-3 and following Buford's outstanding kick that dropped on the six. Problems for Steve Young as he'll start on the six-yard line. Three and out, their last possession, their only possession of this half, I'm afraid, with this field position, three and out, just isn't going to get it. Willie Gillespie, number 83, who played three years for the other Tampa team, the Tampa Bay Bandits in the USFL, out there along with Gerald Carter. And a fake, good block on Hampton, and the pass is completed to Pat Franklin for a few. And right now, an NFL Today report is forthcoming from Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Well, Dick, here is the catch of the day. Mary Kippel of Detroit, Jimmy Giles, one-handed touchdown lines in the Dick and Dan. Wouldn't the Buccaneers love to have that big fella today? Let's go back now to Tampa. You know, that's interesting about Giles not being here. What did Lehman Bennett tell, tell us about those three? Well, he said that Jimmy Giles was actually his best tight end, but just because he wasn't playing up to his capabilities, he didn't think he fit the picture here, and boom, he's gone. Second and nine after the gain of one, and Wilder slices off left tackle and can't spin away from Gary Fensick. So it'll be third down and about five, and... Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the big purge a few weeks ago when House, Giles, and Springs was let go, and uh, basically what Bennett said about Giles went for the other two as well. Yeah, Kevin House was clearly their best wide receiver, and, and Lehman Bennett admits that. There are people here in Tampa that, that cry that it was an economic move. Kevin House and Giles both with, with big contracts. Now, Springs, it's hard to argue that because James Wilder is the guy here. 
But House and Giles, could they be used today? Hey, you better believe it. Third and five at the 11. Young fires it. Knocked away. And the penalty marker down. Mike McGee and Gary Fensick is enraged over that call, which apparently has gone against the Bears. That would be a first down for the Bucks. Here's Dick Jorgensen. Interference, 23, defense, first down. Sean Gale, Fensick pleaded the case because he's an Ivy Leaguer, but Sean Gale committed the penalty. And I think Sean Gale will be coming in from the right. Let's take a look. There he is. Clearly contact before the football gets to Calvin McGee. Sean Gale made contact well, a yard before he should have. I don't think there's any question. Good call. And Sean Gale took the brunt of it. <laughs> well, Calvin McGee is only outweighs him by about 60 pounds. First and 10 for the Buccaneers on the penalty. They're on their own 22, trailing 17 to 3. Steve Young goes down. Perry and Hampton. Back to the 15, and that's the fourth sack of the game by the Bears, who didn't have any against the Rams on Monday night. The first guy that will move by Steve Young, distracting him, is Steve McMichael. But then the pocket, there goes McMichael. He forces up into the inside Steve Young. McMichael dragged the hand across his back, but then it's a smother job by Hampton and William Perry. You're going to have to pump air into Steve Young now. Notice Richard Dent uh, wasn't anywhere around there. When he knows Perry's in the backfield, he's uh, clearing the premises. <laughs> Remember, they had a collision in the first half where Dent was uh, seeing stars for a couple of plays. The loss of six on the 16-yard line. Young to Wilder. No way. And Wilder gets to the 15-yard line. And it was McMichael on the stop, and now... All those fans who brought those orange pom-poms are getting a little anxious here. They don't have the sun, and they don't have the Buccaneers doing anything. And this is an impressive stadium when it's full of orange, as it is this afternoon. But they brought their Buck blaster boards. They were anticipating, I think, a, a closer ball game than we're seeing right now, although it's far from over, only two touchdowns down. But an emotional edge. You expected the Bucks to come flying out of the tunnel, and I didn't see that today. But you took home a couple of those Buck blaster boards. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I saw you. Third and 16. And Young is in trouble. Gets away. And completes it to Carter. And Tampa Bay will have a first down. Pensick on the tackle. And that's that extra dimension that Young brings him. Gain of 21. Well, that is all Steve Young because the blasting up front is being done by the Bear defense. Look at McMichael go right by his guy, Sean Farrell. He flushes Young, and this is nothing more than Steve Young's athletic ability. Finding the open receiver, Gerald Carter, after fighting for his life. That's what we were talking about early, about the athletic abilities of Steve Young. And Gerald Carter today. His third catch of the day went in as the leading receiver for the Bucks, who have a first and ten on their own 36. Wilder. And Wilder gets nothing. Otis Wilson on the tackle. Earlier, Nathan Wansley suffered a neck injury, and he hasn't been back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and now Jerry Bell has suffered a very tough injury indeed. Yeah, word is that he has not only broken but dislocated his ankle and he'll definitely be out for the rest of the football season for the Tampa Bay Club and that is the boy that really hurts them. They're having to play with a rookie in the U back now Pat Franklin. And Jerry Bell had injury problems last year and this has to be very disheartening for him. Second and eight. Young has time and he has his man. McGee and a first down. Otis Wilson on his back. A gain of 11 and Young now threading the needle. And that pass is complete to the 48-yard line of Tampa Bay. Young started the last five games of last year for the Buccaneers, who lost four of those last five. And he's known as the $40 million man from the days with the Los Angeles Express in the USFL. And he bought his way out of that contract and... He just, he just is, is rounding into shape, but he still wants to run more than Lehman Bennett would like to see him run. He'd like to see him become more of a classic pocket quarterback like right here. First and 10, and Fensick around McGee, and McGee makes the catch at the 45. And I think it's awfully tough to get 
your arms around the guy to knock the ball away. And that's the third catch for McGee. And as we pointed out a moment ago, it's gotten cooler here. And you can see the temperature is just under 90 with and, the sun gone. And no one is happier than the 90 guys down on the field. The 45 Bears and Buccaneers, they're delighted at just dropping. That's almost like a spring day now compared to what it was a kickoff. Six minutes and 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second and three Buccaneers. This is their best drive of the day. Wilder is close to a first down. Ron Rivera on the stop. The deepest penetration for Tampa Bay has been the Bears 24. And the only points for the Bucks was a 42-yard field goal by Igwe Bike in the first quarter. What a solid drive this is, too, mixing the running of Wilder with some solid pocket passing by Steve Young. And when he's had to make the break from the pocket, he's done it well. This is, to me, their most solid and best play calling of any drive they've had all day. The 11th play coming up on third and one. And James Wilder, second effort, and it's going to be close. Ron Rivera may have stopped Wilder. And I'm sure we'll have a measurement here. I doubt we'll see a punt if we're short. In bear territory, I don't know that Lehman Bennett could. <laughs> they might come down out of the stands if he punts the football here. I don't think that's in the offing. Down 17 to 3 with five and a half to play in the third. And if they're not even going to measure it, measure it, it's going to be fourth down. And actually, Wilder lost some yards. So it'll be fourth. And I'd say just about a yard. That's what it looks like. It's a good full yard. Last time they needed it, Young called his own number. Twelfth play of this drive. And Young throws it incomplete on a rollout and great pressure from the Bears. And so Chicago will take over on downs as they stop the Tampa Bay Bucks on fourth and one. Dave Dewerson will get credit. 5.04 to go, and the Bears hold. How often do you see Dave Dewerson disrupt someone's offense? He's going to come on the blitz number seven. J.D. Marleyveld tries to cut Dewerson, doesn't get it done. Dewerson's going to end up in the face of Steve Young, force an early throw, off balance, falling backwards. He doesn't get it to Pat Franklin on the fourth down play. On the 43, first and 10, Bears possession. Incomplete going for Calvin Thomas, and leaving the field is James Wilder on his own power, but obviously with a problem, and he'll go to the Tampa Bay dressing room. Tough man to lose. They've already lost Bell, and uh, the Buccaneers have to hope Wilder gets back. Whatever it is, it doesn't appear to be a leg problem, as James Wilder is walking without a limp. He doesn't have his helmet along. We'll get a report to you as soon as one is passed along to us. That's a long way up, so it may be a lot. Especially if you have to pass it along to us. <laughs> Second and ten. At the 43, exactly five minutes remaining in the third. You take everything so literally. I was <laughs> It'll get here. Carrier pitcher. Jay Hilgenberg says, I don't like the ball that was here. How about a new one? Well, Jay, this isn't the World Series. He must have think Mike Scott sent that one in. <laughs> He's going to collect him by his locker room and show everyone the stuff. <laughs> Dennis Gentry is in at wide receiver along with Willie Ball. Tim Reitman is the tight end. Calvin Thomas and Peyton are the backs. Going deep is Tom Zach, overthrown. Closest to it was Vito McKeever. And for an NFL Today report, let's check in with Brent. All right, Dick, and just when it appears as though the Lions are going to take command, it's Kramer to Carter. In two pass plays, they score. Carter has caught five balls for 111 passes. That's 21 touchdowns this season for Tommy Gunn. Let's go back to Dick. Thank you, Brent. The Bears lead at 17-3. to They took a 14-0 lead on their first two possessions and have been able now to coast. And the Buccaneers have uh, had their own problems with fumbles when they've been threatening. Interception by Vesti Jackson when the Buccaneers were looking to score at the one yard line and fourth and one failure. And it looks like that the clouds reflect the Tampa Bay fortune. Third down and 10. Bears on their own 43. Payton cuts inside and Walter Payton will be stopped. 
At the 47, fourth down, way short of a first down. Tyrone Keyes and Vito McKeever on the tackle, and Buford will come in and kick. And that was a very uneven series for Mike Tomczak. The two previous plays were really poorly thrown passes, and on the Bears sideline and up here in the booth, the Doug Flutie watches on. You wonder now if Mike Ditka at some point in time will give him some play. Penalty marker down as Buford kicks to Futrell, calls for the fair catch. And they'll bring it back. That was a 53-yard kick by Buford, having one of his better days of the season. Well, if it's against the Bears, I don't know that that will automatically be declined. They'll get it at their 20-yard line. And it looks like they are going to Illegal decline. motion, number 25, kicking team, decline. First down. Todd Bell, the guilty party. The penalty was declined. And when we return, the Buccaneers will try again from their own 20. Of course, everyone remembers the memorable pass to Gerard Phelan for the victory for Boston College over Miami in a bittersweet week because the day that Flutie was activated, Gerard Phelan was released by the New England Patriots. And he talked to Phelan this week. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. 414 remaining. Bobby Howard, number 25, is in at running back with Wilder in the dressing room. Young will throw, and the pass nearly picked off and caught by Carter, and that'll be good for a first down. And once again, it looked like the Bears, Bestie Jackson, was going for the ball. Bestie Jackson, I think, was envisioning himself trotting into the end zone with this Steve Young pass. He makes a good burst to the football, but Boy, another gamble by a young defensive back. That time, Gerald Carter, good concentration, staying with the football, makes, makes a good catch. And Young, we're not having such a strong arm, threw a dart that time. Fourth catch for 61 yards for Carter. Some of them of the circus variety. First and 10 Buccaneers on their own 31. Penalty markers fly, perhaps before the play got underway, and Sean Farrell. Number 62, offense. That move. Still first up. Dan, we looked at Flutie on the sideline, and it looked like he had some uh, some tape or something on his uh, sleeve. Does that have anything to do with the offense? Well, Doug Flutie wears a, a, a wristband all the way up on his left forearm. We can see a shot of it there on his left arm. And what that has is about 30 plays in the Bear offense, the formations that accompany those plays, and they have a corresponding number. And the number will be flashed into Flutie from the sidelines. He'll look up the number on the wristband, and that'll give him the play in the formation. Well, maybe we'll see it happen. Who knows? First and 15 now for Tampa Bay. Back on the 26. Steve Young dumps it off to Howard. And Howard is tackled from behind at the 29. And for an NFL Today report, again, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Yeah, Brent. Around the National Football League now, it is generally agreed that Morton Anderson of the Saints is the best field goal kicker. He just put the first three points on the board in this game, and the Saints are ahead of the Rams, three to nothing. They have gone to the fourth quarter, back to Dick and Dan. Boy, Dan, don't the, the Rams play kind of, uh, say, winning ugly? I mean, they might have invented it this year. In the Conservative NFL. football, we'll call it. <laughs> three to nothing in the fourth quarter. Second down and 11 for Steve Young here, with 327 remaining, third quarter. Young. Overthrows McGee, and it'll be third now. The report on James Wilder is that he has bruised ribs and will not be back in the game. So Tampa Bay has lost both Jerry Bell for the season and James Wilder today. And they are replaced by two rookies, Bobby Howard and Pat Franklin. And if Tampa Bay doesn't have enough problems scoring points in the second half, they are really behind the eight ball now. We have a sellout of 74,000 fans. First home sellout since... 83 when these teams played, and it's the quietest 74,000, although I know there are Bear fans out there. Third down and 11. With the Bears leading 17 to 3. On a design rollout, Young hits his man, and a first down for the Buccaneers in Chicago territory, and that's Gerald Carter, and now they rule it incomplete. Vensic covering. And they rule that it was not Hill. Let's take a look at it from behind. Steve Young, a designed rollout to the right side. The Bear defensive linemen are a little winded. Only McMichael gives much of a chase. Was the catch made? You be the judge. No. Nope, we could see the ball hit the ground. Gerald Carter not able to hold on. 
Not that time for Carter, so it's fourth down, and Frank Garcia comes in to kick it away for the Buccaneers, and Lou Barnes goes back for the Bears. The only scoring here in the third quarter has been a 25-yard field goal by Kevin Butler to break his own record. 14 consecutive three-pointers. Barnes calls for the fair catch at the 35, just in the nick of time. And with three minutes to go, in the third quarter, timeout Bear here in Tampa. In the 36 yard line. Three minutes remaining in the third quarter, and the Bears lead the Buccaneers 17 to 3. The Bucs were able to gain yardage from their own 20 to the Bears 40 before the Bears tighten up the defense, but not even that time was Tampa Bay able to mount a drive. And you can see the difference on first down today between the two clubs. Mike Tomzak in his third start this year. Trying to bring the Bears home a winner. Calvin Thomas and Walter Peake. And Keith Ortego in motion. Peake runs into the official, who actually should get credit for the tackle at the 42-yard line. Keith Browner was also in on the play. No official takes more of a pounding than the umpire. He's the guy closest to all the action, and often he gets caught on the cutback, and that's what we see here with Walter Payton. No place to go. Give him an assist. A pretty good shot that time, but he appears to be okay. The headset goes flying, the replay headset, and let's see if that's in working order, and we'll have everybody back in good shape. Neil, Neil Garib is the umpire here this afternoon. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Don't forget, coming up next, it'll be the Giants against the Eagles. The Giants trying to win their first division title since 1963 in an NFC East battle. Right here at second and three at the 42. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And they give it to Walter Payton again. And Payton will have a first down. Stopped by Scott Brantley. And uh, they didn't need the fans except for the early moments of this game. Walter Payton now with 97 yards on 15 carries. Will likely go over the 100 mark for the eighth time in 17 games against Tampa Bay. First and 10 at the 49. And there he is, Payton goes over 100. Into Tampa Bay territory at the 46. Jeff Davis on the tackle. With 1.40 to go. Peyton, for the 77th time in his career, has gained 100 yards or more. He's at 102. And what an offensive line that he works behind. Covert and Bortz, Hilgenberg, Thayer, and Van Horn. Best part about that line is their age. Van Horn, a six-year player. Hilgenberg, a six-year player. They're the old guys on that line. Pro Bowls in there and looks like a lot of them in the future. Second and five at the Tampa Bay 46. Peyton still working. And Peyton will have another first down for the Bears. This is the kind of style that Mike Ditka likes the most. Brantley and Curry on the tackle. The Bears have led the NFL in rushing for three years in a row. The last time that happened was the Cleveland Browns in the mid 60s. Chicago's going for the fourth straight time, and right now they're fourth in the league. Interestingly enough, who are the two guys carrying the majority of the time? Walter Payton and Jim Brown. You need one of those studs out there. It's not a coincidence, is it? First and ten. The Bucks 37. Calvin Thomas. And Chris Washington. On the play, gain of five, check it, gain of two. And uh, that may have been the last play of the third quarter. Butler's field goal came before the end of the first half, so we have not had any scoring here in the third quarter as the gun sounds. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Chicago Bears 17, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 3. To start the fourth quarter, Dick Stockton and Dan Deerdorf. The Bears have a second and eight at the Tampa Bay 35-yard line. And there's Calvin Thomas gets an opening, and Thomas with a first down and more as he drove Rod Jones five yards 
into the sidelines. It has a first and ten at the 13. This is a quick hitter just to the left side, running towards the tight end, Emery Moorhead. Let's watch the blocking up front by the Bears. The down block by Moorhead and unblocked comes in Craig Swope, but loses his footing, overruns it, and that opens it up for Calvin Thomas. And look at the play on Jones on the sidelines. He sends Rod Jones four yards out of bounds. Longest run from scrimmage had been nine yards for Thomas before that 22-yard spurt. First and 10 at the 13. And Peyton dives to the 10-yard line. Second down. Jeff Davis and Bob Nelson combine to make the tackle and taking a look at the way this game has gone by quarters. Tom Zack on the first series went 92 yards and went over from the one. Then he hit Willie Gold with a 37-yard pass for his first NFL touchdown. Igwe Bike for the only Tampa Bay points, and Butler matched that in the second quarter. But we have to keep in mind what has happened to Tampa offensively. Nathan Wansley, James Wilder, Jerry Bell, all out of the lineup and won't be back. Second and seven at the 10. Toss to Peyton. Peyton always can throw, of course. This time he looked and was knocked out of bounds for no gain by Chris Washington. No place to go. <laughs> that was good timing by the two. <laughs> Absolutely no place to go. Chris Washington that time strung it out very, very well. Tampa Bay right now has to wonder, especially if you're on that defensive team, what are we going to have to do? I mean, here it is, 17 points. We're in the fourth quarter. If you look at the Bears offensively, you got to say that's not all that bad. We've kept our guys in the lineup as we look at Craig Swope who's down on the field on the far sideline off of the field. Well the defense has done very well. In fact after the first two series they've spun a shutout other than a field goal. But they've had to look at their offensive counterparts walking into the dressing room. It's tough to keep it going under those types of circumstances. Time out as they tend to Swope. We'll be back. From Illinois Craig Swope being helped off the field being replaced by Ivory Sully in the Tampa Bay lineup. Mike Ditka, he had some interesting things to say to us yesterday. He said there'll be significant, maybe shocking changes next year on the floor. Well, he said, even if we win it all this year, I've got to make changes. He's just not happy, I think, with the overall, should we call it chemistry or whatever this club. He said, don't be surprised by anything I do. Raised our eyebrows. Third and seven, Calvin Thomas. Bites his way to the five, shy of a first down by a couple. It'll be fourth down, and he said, uh, look, maybe even the coach will be involved, but I'm not going to worry about that. Well, I'm not too worried about that either. I think Mike Dicker will be one of the guys that will be here next year. But, you know, he said, I just believe that you have to make changes. Year in and year out, you can't keep going with the same people. Let your imagination run wild to who he's talking about. A couple of the people that have to be considered, maybe a guy like Jim McMahon, uh, Gary Fensick, anybody like that, who knows? This will be a 22 yard field goal attempt Fuller holding for Butler who's got a streak of 14 in a row. And the kick is good and it is now 20 to 3. You know it is not far fetched to speculate a little bit and not so much that the things that Jim McMahon says or does but the fact is that this has been an uncertain bear team because of the fact they don't know really from week to week whether McMahon is going to suit up and that proved that uncertainty really disrupts the club puts a lot of pressure on the defense too and that is the issue it's really not a case of what Jim McMahon says or his behavior I think a lot of times that that gets overplayed sometimes I'm sure that that Mike Ditka takes offense at some of the things that McMahon says but by the same token he knows what kind of a player he is the case is that Jim McMahon spends more time than the coaches would like to see on the sidelines as we see him here uh, you know that's a snappy outfit but Mike Ditka would rather see him in a helmet and shoulder pads and when he's not it hurts the Chicago Bears he's got to get a quarterback that can stay healthy and this isn't the first year that Jim McMahon has been hurt they're a different team without him that's been said that's like a broken record now and uh, they say that McMahon this week is going to start to throw and, and if he does miss next week it may be the last game he misses before he comes back they say that the shoulder joint itself is fine it's healed he's had some problems in some of the surrounding areas of the shoulder underneath it and 
There's no question about it. The guy is a winner. He's a heck of a football player. Regardless of what he says, his actions do speak even louder than his words. The question is, is he healthy enough of the time to suit Mike Ditka? And also, I guess some of the talk shows in Chicago, some of the reaction by the fans up there are not, you know, not necessarily in his favor. The kickoff to Bobby Howard is down in the end zone for a touchback. And the Buccaneers will take over on the 20. Well, let's take a broad look now at what's going on in the NFC in the Eastern Division. Coming into today, the Giants and the Redskins were tied for first with Dallas a game behind and Philadelphia looming as uh, perhaps spoilers. The Washington Redskins are leading Green Bay. And, of course, Max Zendaya has a missed the conversion. It's 13 to 7. Coming up next, it'll be the Giants trying to hold on or he's gain the lead in the East. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. So we'll see what Young can do offensively. A lot of his ammunition out of there. Ducks away from one defender. And gets the pass off. And fumbled out of bounds, I believe, by Pat Franklin. It looked as if he had possession and then lost it. And they're going to bring it back to the 29-yard line. And it'll still be Tampa Bay's ball. Again, we're going to look at the scrambling abilities of Steve Young. Richard Dent's going to come in from the right side, right over the top of Young. In pursuit again, go the Bear defensive lineman. This time, though, it's out. It's completed to Franklin. He loses the ball, but Dick, they're going to bring it back. The new rule is that uh, if you fumble the ball forward, uh, they bring it back to the point at which you lost the ball. And so they are just shy of the first down as a result. Second and one. Ball is at the 29-yard line. Up and flags fly. The center and the quarterback. We'll get a false start that time. Someone, either the quarterback left early or the ball was late, one or the other. We'll get a false start. Team still second down. So make it second down and six. Young shaking his head. All encompassing when you say false start on the team. <laughs> Pretty tough to be wrong that way. Updating the scores right here. We have 12 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Bears lead it 20 to 3. Minnesota two games behind. They're leading Detroit. Young. And Carter is defended by Vesty Jackson. And it'll be third and five. Speaking about the Bears again and Flutie coming in and McMahon not happy with that kind of a move. What do you find uh, talking to most of the Bears about Flutie's arrival? Well, it, it depends. If you talk to the offensive players, first of all, the offensive starters, they're very fond of Jim McMahon. He's their guy, and why not? He's the guy that took them where they wanted to go. That's winning the Super Bowl. But if you talk to some of the defensive ball players, all they're interested is one thing, production. They want points scored. They say nothing against Tom Zach, nothing against Fuller. We just want a guy in there who can score some points for us. Third and six. Young. Holds on and still has it. And it was Sean Gale who nearly had a chance for the interception. He got a piece of it. Carter had it, then lost it out of bounds. Well, Gale had it, then it goes to Carter. Now watch Sean Gale. He moves in front, bobbles the ball. Now Gerald Carter makes a play on it. He has it, but then it comes loose. It comes loose. I think they're going to rule it a completed pass to Gerald Carter. And a first down because Gale could not get possession before that fumble went out of bounds. So it'll be first down for Tampa Bay. Nice job by Gerald Carter of staying with the football. Steve Young lucky that one wasn't picked off by Gale and walked into the end zone. So he has reached the season's high for completions in this game. Bobby Howard is the running back. Young looking down the middle, knocked away. Gillespie was the intended receiver, and uh, Mike Richardson was depending on the play, and Gillespie, who has been bothered by an ankle injury, looks like he's shaken up again. And it looks like it's, it's his left ankle that's hurt again, and the Bears are taking a toll on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're going to be hard-pressed to have enough people left 
to finish this ball game. We're losing a Buccaneer about every third or fourth play. And there Gillespie, a wide receiver, goes down with Wilder and Wansley out. The Bucks do not have a running back who has gained a yard rushing this season, other than Steve Young. From ground level, Young with good protection this time, but look at the wobble on the football. That's why we had to see the reaction by Gillespie back to the inside. He made the cut on the left ankle. It went out from under him. And he comes off on his own power. Timeout, 20 to 3, the Bears. Silent Tampa Stadium. High hopes and bright sunshine before the game started, but it's been the Bears. 20 to 3, and right now the Buccaneers have a second and 10 on their own 30 yard line. Howard. And Bobby Howard with some nice running. He's a rookie. Low round draft pick out of the Philadelphia Eagles and he was dropped and picked up by Tampa Bay Otis Wilson and Dave Dewerson on the stop and between Howard who's replaced Wilder and Pat Franklin who's replaced Jerry Bell they have a grand total of three games experience for Tampa Bay so offensively it's going to be difficult for them to do anything they're going to have to hope somehow one of their guys comes up with just an unbelievable effort gets lucky maybe takes advantage of a Chicago mistake that was Howard's first NFL carry third and four and the pass incomplete McGee the intended receiver but once again Sean Gale and Fensick two defenders were on him there's Gary Fensick leaving the field and it isn't without the realm of possibility that either next year or maybe before the end of this year you're going to see Todd Bell move into the starting lineup again and you're not going to be able to take out Dave Dewerson are you. Well you've got two guys that have been to the Pro Bowl at strong safety and Mike Dick had told us that Todd Bell the better support guy the better tackler and if anyone would be a natural free safety it would be Dave Dewerson. And when you look at Gary Fensick in his 11th year you know it really is that time where you start talking about who will play his position in the future. Garcia gets off a of beauty. Lou Barnes back to the six. And Barnes fumble at the 19. And the Bears recovered. A 58 yard punt, and the Bears will have it at the 19. Next Saturday, it's a doubleheader day of college football action. On Wisconsin is the name of the song. The Badgers host Ohio State. And the Buckeyes have won eight in a row, and they're trying for the Big Ten crown. And before they can think of Michigan, they got to think of Wisconsin. They certainly do, but boy, the Buckeyes on a roll. That'll be 12 o'clock Eastern, our live coverage, Ohio State against Wisconsin. Then it's a doubleheader. How about UCLA against Washington or Clemson against Maryland? And Clemson, Maryland, you got to like that. No head coaches on the sidelines. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, Doug Flutie looking for a possible opportunity today. He's looking to get as close to Mike Ditka as he can, so maybe Ditka will see him and send him into the ballgame. First and ten Bears on their 18. Payton. And what a cut by Walter Payton as he faked out Craig Curry and gets big yardage up to the 43-yard line before Ron Holmes knocks him out of bounds. 26 yards for vintage Walter Payton. And you have to wonder how long they're going to leave Peyton in the ball game. But if you love football, you got to like to watch him. Look at the blocks out in front. Matt Suey, his lead blocker, throwing a heck of a block right there. Van Horn, Becker, the whole group is doing it. And what he did to Curry, it's just tough to describe. And now he's going to leave the ball game to congratulations by the sidelines, including Mike Ditka. Walter Peyton on 20 carries gained 139 yards this afternoon and it's not like they don't have anybody else who can carry the football there's a guy that's wanted it badly Thomas Sanders and he gets a chance right here check that that's Suey it won't be long before Sanders does get the call Sanders was up front blocking and Scott Brantley on the stop let's take a look now at what the Bears have to look forward to on the schedule Dan not much the Chicago Bears their schedule one of the easiest in the National Football League if you look at their remaining games only two names really stick out at you you see the Atlanta Falcons that come up next week and then the Dallas Cowboys but look at that run in between Green Bay Pittsburgh another game with Tampa and Detroit only 37 percent winning percentage for the Bear opponents second and six Matt Suey. 
trying to get first down yardage into Tampa Bay territory and Walter Payton feeling much better playing despite the toe problem 61 yards against the Rams last week. Coach Lehman Bennett and WTOG Channel 44 team up every Monday evening to bring you the Lehman Live Show. It'll be third down and one. Be a part of the live audience. And a chance for Thomas Sanders who scored two touchdowns last week against the Rams and led the Bears with 69 yards rushing. And when you look at Walter Payton on the sidelines, what is there to add? The man makes his own statement. Third and one. Suey dropped for a loss. For Payton, by the way, we have seen his two best rushing games of the season. 177 against the Eagles in the second game of the year, and the 139 today. And you know he's not happy at all about sitting on the bench. I mean, it sounds stupid to say that he would rather be in the ball game. But someone like Walter Payton, in a way that he enjoys the activity, he would rather be out on the field. He's not thinking about taking a rest. I would be if I was him, but he and I obviously think in dissimilar ways. Well, Mike Ditka going for it on fourth down and less than a yard. And going through it through the air, and it's incomplete. Knocked away by Jeff Davis. So on fourth and one, and a 20 to 3 lead he went for it and called a pass play. Tampa Bay will take over on downs. So again we talked about the the best records and here they are now a lot of seven and twos. Rams Giants and the Skins all tied with the Bears but none of them have a schedule as easy as Chicago's and what they're playing for is the home field advantage and if you have it this is what these teams have done with it. They've gone to the Super Bowl <laughs> every one of them. Home field advantage in the NFC title game. First and ten for the Buccaneers on their own 47 following the fourth down failure by the Bears. And Richard Dent will get his fifth sack of the season. And the fifth of the day for the Bears defense. And he's been awfully active today even though that's his first sack. But remember what we talked about his sack total being down. A lot of his sacks last year came when the Bears had the big lead. You know the other team has to pass. That's when a true pass rusher like Dent really comes to the forefront. That time he goes right by Rob Taylor with the easy sack. They needed that after that fourth down call by Ditka. Uh, you know they're only they're down 17 points. Okay, granted it's a long shot of Tampa could come back, but an interesting call going to the air on fourth and short. Loss of 10, second down, back at the 37. Young gets Gillespie close to the first down with forward yardage. Let's see where he is. Bestie Jackson and Gary Fensick on the tackle to the 45 yard line of the Bears. A gain of 19 and they'll be shy by a yard. And Gillespie back in the ballgame after having to leave with a bad ankle. So some good injury news for Tampa. First NFL catch for Gillespie who had been on injured reserve with a hamstring pull and suffered that an ankle injury and then got shaken up here. Third and one at the 49 yard line. Make it the 44 yard line of Chicago. And it's Howard who's still short. Richard Dent came in strong. That was an impressive punching line play by the Bears. Now it'll be fourth down. Coming up, it'll be the Giants and the Eagles. You know, the Eagles seem to react very well after they get beaten badly as they did the first time they play the Giants. With Buddy Ryan coaching the Eagles, I really have given up on trying to predict how they'll play. They've played very well against the tougher teams. I remember them taking this Bear squad into overtime. I remember Septien having to kick a field goal on the last play of the game for the Cowboys to beat the Eagles. They're a better team than a lot of people give them credit for being. Fourth down and a long one, and a penalty marker is down. I've never seen that many flags. Quarterback heads off, number eight, offense. Still fourth up. There are five flags on the field. Boy, nobody wanted to get caught with one in their pocket that time. That time. <laughs> Trying to draw the Bears off sides. And they went off themselves, and it'll be fourth and six, and Garcia will come in and kick now. Well, the quarterback got called for head bobbing, and you're not allowed to move your head with the intention of drawing the defensive team off sides. And that time, Steve Young 
intentionally I think they had no I don't think they had any real idea of running up at that time in an attempt to draw the Bears off sides he got caught Garcia to kick Lou Barnes back for the Bears and this kick will sail into the end zone for a 50 yard kick and a touchback and we'll be back to Tampa Stadium with 642 remaining Bears lead at 20 to 3 in Florida I was going to say sunny Florida we had that early but it's been overcast most of the afternoon now and the Bears comfortably in front 20 to 3 with 642 remaining in the fourth quarter on their 20 yard line Mike Tomczak second year out of Ohio State in his best showing of the season particularly on the scoreboard Sanders tackled from behind the line by Ron Holmes. Ron Holmes, the pass rusher, and I guess Lehman Bennett told us, Dan, that he's one of the people he's keying his rebuild defense on. Well, he was their first player drafted last year in 85, the eighth guy taken in the draft. And is he going to be a Pro Bowl ball player? Who knows? He's got a ways to go. Ron Holmes not developing at quite the pace a lot of the Tampa Bay people would like to see him develop. But he sure has a lot of the physical attributes that the great ones have. Second and 16, and Tom Zach is going to go deep this time, and beating the defense downfield was Willie Galt, and covering was Rod Jones. But Tom Zach hit Galt when he had to with a 37-yard touchdown pass to give the Bears a 14 to nothing lead. As we check the late scores in the game, and Galt had been unable to get open because of double coverage in recent weeks ever since he had that big seven-catch game against the Bengals. And the touchdown pass to Galt in the first quarter was Mike Tomczak's best pass of the day. And yes, that is Doug Flutie warming up on the Chicago sideline. Wristband it all with the plays on board. He was real loose yesterday when we talked to him. You know, he's really gotten used to having the attention of, a, of being a hero. I think when you win the Heisman Trophy, I think that it's dealing with the media is something that you learn to live with, it's something you learn to handle. And, what did he tell us though? He just wants to get in there and get that first play under his belt. That way he's no longer a spectator. He's really a member of the Bears squad. Third down and 16. Tom Zach can pick and choose, and he chooses or to go on a first down for the Bears at the 32-yard line. Vito McKeever and Urban Randall on the stop, and for or to go. That is his first reception of the ball game. Good for 19. And Tampa Bay better choose to send more than just three people after the quarterback because they're not going to mount any pass rush whatsoever. They drop eight, send three, and Mike Tomczak, without a Buccaneer defensive lineman in sight, has all the time in the world to find Ortigo on a crossing pattern. And Keith shaken up on the play, goes off the field as I would assume he's receiving a long distance call. <laughs> The fridge is uh, says I'm going to defrost a little bit right here. First and ten at the 33, and he is big. 5:32 remaining in the fourth quarter. And on a handoff, a fumble. Thomas Sanders. Did the whistle blow or did he cough it up? Or did he cough it up after he hit the ground? It's still Chicago ball apparently, and. It was Ron Holmes who made the hit on that play. If he had the ball when he hit the ground, and that may be what they're ruling, it can't be a fumble. It popped right out of there. The penetration by Holmes hit Suey. I mean, Sanders, rather. Ooh, the ball looked like it might have been coming out before he hit the ground. Ooh, the ball looked like it might have been loose before Thomas Sanders actually hit the ground. Let's look at it from a different angle. I wonder if they're checking the replay now. I think they may be. Well, there it. Boy, now there. <laughs> now we're going to get confused. Five, oh, four. Now that angle, it almost looked like it was still in his arm when he hit the ground. Isn't it deceiving how you can look at it from a couple different ways? Let's look again. Is it in his arm? There, it looked like it was still in his arm yes. when he hit the ground. So, so that would be no fumble. Second and ten at the 33. Under five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. And 
Tom Zach has his man that time. Willie Gall beats Jones. Boy, have they been working on Rod Jones, the rookie, all day. And again, he hits Gall for 50 yards to the 17-yard line. No difference between this pass and all the others as far as Willie Gall is concerned. He's a couple yards by Rod Jones. It's just this time. Mike Tomzak got him the football, and Doug Flutie is coming into the ball game. Doug Flutie is coming in in relief of Mike Tomzak, and that's a good way to get Tomzak out of the game after a long completion. The crowd was chanting for him on the sidelines, and now Doug Flutie, who the Bears said this week had the strongest arm of all four quarterbacks, will run his first play in the National Football League. And it's been a while since he's run a play for anybody. On first down, Sanders. And he's wrestled down by Irvin Randall. Now let's see how the system works with him taking a call from the sidelines. Will he go to the wristband? And a big game for Mike Tomzak in his third start after a couple of times struggling. Came through with 11 of 24 for 265 yards. First NFL touchdown. He also threw an interception. But here's Doug Flutie. Second and eight at the 15. Sanders slides out of bounds at the 10. Tackle by Davis. So it's 20 to 3. The Bears over the Bucks with 327 to go in the game. So now we're looking for Doug Flutie to throw his first. NFL pass and the interesting thing when we talked to him yesterday he said you know the longer I was out the more doubts I was beginning to have about my ability to play well almost on a daily basis people are telling him that he's too short that his arm isn't very strong that he doesn't have the tools that all the other quarterbacks of the National Football League have and he said you know after a while you're not human if you don't question yourself he has Barnes and Gentry as his receivers Matt Suey with a penalty marker down Dives forward close to first down yardage. Suey had to get to the seven yard line, and he's close. Ivory Sully and Jeff Davis on the stop, but a penalty against Tampa Bay. That'll give the Bears a first down. Making sure that he doesn't lose the wristband, <laughs> keeping his right arm in touch with that. Without that, Doug Flutie's in real trouble. Look at him refer to it now, getting a play off of there. Offside, <laughs> number 51, defense, from the 10 to the 5, first down. And Neil Anderson, the first round draft pick out of the University of Florida, who led the Gators in rushing, coming back to play before the home folks, replaces Sanders at running back. Flutie says, now they sent me in a number 11. Now, what is a number 11? Let's uh, let's refer to my left arm and see if I can get a play out of here. He said that he understands the offense. But the terminology and formations are different. First and goal on the five. Flutie rolling out. And going out of bounds at the six. Loss of one, Jeff Davis chased Doug. Was this a rollout all the way? It's hard to tell. Looked like it was a missed handoff. Looked like he was trying to hand the ball off to Neil Anderson. You could see the way that Anderson spun around and looked behind him. I don't think that was a designated rollout. I think that was a busted handoff. And the Redskins go eight and two on the year, beating the Green Bay Packers 16 to seven. So now the Giants, who are playing the Eagles now, need a win to stay even with Washington in first place in the NFC East. Second and goal at the six. Anderson and Suey are there, and here's Anderson. And he gets to the five, and it'll be third and goal. Holmes and Randall. Let's watch Doug Flutie's footwork as he executes the pitch to Anderson. Looks like he gets his feet caught up with his left guard, Mark Bortz, who's trying to pull on the play. That's why Anderson is caught out there. His 
lead guard got tripped up with the quarterback Doug Flutie looks like a, a rocky beginning for Doug Flutie but nonetheless this is good work for him got to get the butterflies out of the way here in Tampa third and goal at the five for Doug Flutie Bears lead it 20 to three To the left, looking, tossing, incomplete. Pass was intended for Emery Moorhead, and it'll be fourth down. So <laughs> welcome to the NFL, Doug. He had all the time in the world as he floats out to the left. I don't know what happened to the Tampa rush. There's no one. Look at him on the ground. Watch now. We'll see Moorhead come across the picture, moving right to left. Oh, he's got him wide open and just overthrows him, let him way too far. Did he know he made a bad pass? You be the judge. <laughs> Wild pitch. <laughs> Timeout. We have our two-minute warning here at Tampa Stadium. Shooting for his 16th consecutive field goal. It'll be a 22-yarder holding Steve Fuller. Kick is good, so 16 in a row by Fuller. 23 to 3, and Flutie, I guess, uh, hoping he gets another chance in there. He had Emery Moorhead wide open in the end zone, but just simply let him too much. Butler. That would have been an easy yeah. way for him to get started in the NFL with a touchdown pass, but maybe next time. Kevin Butler with 16 straight field goals. There's a happy Doug Flutie. Well, want to make it easy $1,500 a day? Get yourself a gang of kids to go out and pick pockets. That's what the gypsy bosses do. That story and more tonight on 60 Minutes. That's followed by Angela Lansbury in Murder, She Wrote. Then Joan Collins, George Hamilton, and Lauren Hutton, all star in part one of the CBS miniseries, Monte Carlo. That's all tonight on CBS. The New Orleans Saints with two Morton Anderson field goals beat the LA Rams six to nothing. And the Redskins beat the Packers, as we told you earlier, 16 to 7. So amongst the elite in the NFL, the best records are owned by the Bears, who are minutes away from 8 and 2, and the Redskins. The Rams have dropped off the pace, and of course, it's up to the New York Giants to keep pace as they get ready to, to get it going with the Philadelphia Eagles. Game just underway, so New York must win to keep pace with these Chicago Bears. Howard and Futrell are back, and Butler will kick off. He has kicked three field goals today. There's Howard on the left. And this kick will sail again out of the end zone, a touchback, and the Bucks will start from the 20-yard line. Well, this could have been for optimistic Buccaneer fans. Maybe a turning point coming off the victory last week. Capacity crowd, the Bears. Well, you have to not only look at the fact that they've lost the ball game, but look at the football players they've lost, and who knows for how long. Nathan Wansley, we are told, has a, a serious neck injury, and we'll have to wait and see how long he's going to be out or what his status is. James Wilder left the game with some bruised ribs. He did not return to action. Jerry Bell, already we've been notified, out for the rest of the season with a broken and dislocated ankle. So not only do you lose the ball game, but you also lose a lot of your most talented football players. First and 10, Tampa Bay on the 20. 157 to go. And Young hits Dan Hampton on the back with his pass. <laughs> Dan Hampton. That's, I guess you don't have to Come be on. near the quarterback to have things happen. He floated out in the pass coverage that time and got speared by the football. Well, he's the guy that told you at the top of the game, and you mentioned he's his last year as far as fun. On a scale from 1 to 10, it was 10 this year. It's a 2, and this game probably uh, a lot higher than a 2 in the fun department. And you wonder how true that is for most teams the season after having won a Super Bowl. Second and 10. Young. It's Williams. Good move by Williams after the catch and a first down to the 35-yard line. So David Williams, who is waived by the Bears on a 15-yard pickup, Al Harris on the stop. 23 to 3 the score. Two of Tampa Bay's losses have been in overtime. Successive defeats to the Falcons and the Rams. First and ten at the 35. 
Young hits McGee. McGee, tough to bring down, is gets into Bear territory. Todd Bell and Ron Rivera never really do bring him down. No, maybe Ron Rivera, they ought to have some tackling practice with William Perry. <laughs> Calvin McGee, not quite that big, but as big as any tight end in the league. A good solid 250 pounds. Tampa Bay calls the timeout. And right now we want to thank some people that have played a role in bringing you this ball game. The coordinating producer, Charles H. Milton III. The guys in the truck doing the work today and a fine job produced by John Ferratzis, directed by Bob Fishman. One oh six on the clock. And the Bears with a 20 point lead They had lost two of their last three games. They have a game coming up in Atlanta next week. And as Dan mentioned their toughest game will be the Falcons on the road next week and the Cowboys to close on December 21st. And we also want to thank the guys who every week help us so much in the booth our spotter Marty Aronoff and our statistician Roger Riley. Ted Shaker the executive producer of CBS Sports and what turned out or looked to be a festive afternoon has uh, gone a different way today. It really you knew the Tampa Bay the type of offensive team they are not really having the big strike capability when they allowed the Bears to score on their first two possessions were right off the bat down 14 to nothing you knew that it just wasn't their day and they made some some of those mistakes the two and seven teams make which is why they're two and seven. First and ten at the 48 for the Bucks. And the pass complete to Pat Franklin. And he's wrestled down by Todd Bell. Of course, now, as we talked about at halftime, that Doug Flutie has made his arrival, people are going to say which one of the four quarterbacks or other three quarterbacks do you think uh, have their days numbered in Chicago? Well, let's just look at next week. I think it has to be Mike Tomczak as the starter if Jim McMahon is not helping. Second and nine. Young running up the middle. And Al Harris on the stop. And Steve Young looks like he's wounded a finger or something, shaking his left hand. Timeout called by the Buccaneers. They have one left. And Young wringing that hand. They're down to few live bodies. They don't need anything to happen to Steve Young. He's forced to run with the football and Al Harris catches him from behind and you see him go right down. Looks like it might have been the thumb on his left hand that he caught underneath. Keep in mind that's his throwing hand as well. Steve Young left handed. So uh, as, as you point out Tom Zach winning today as a starter and they have four quarterbacks right now and there's McMahon who is the regular and Flutie who just arrived and uh, so the question is is Steve Fuller the odd man out. Well because of the size of his contract Steve Fuller is the first guy that comes into discussion Steve Fuller makes considerably more money than either Doug Flutie or Mike Tomczak so if it's an economical decision it'll be Steve Fuller uh, who's been the most effective I don't know we're, we're splitting hairs uh, if a guy has a future on this ball club though and a long range future somehow I get the impression that Mike Tomczak is the guy I think that he's the guy that's going to be either their second or third quarterback depending upon how effective is Doug Flutie. You know it's not a given that he's just going to come into this league and dominate. I mean I, that's a that's not necessarily I think a foregone conclusion. Third and five and the Buccaneers have one timeout left with thirty five seconds to go. Young stays in there. And his pass Phillips defending Carter incomplete. By the way Steve Young today completed 21 passes in a losing cause but that ties his NFL career high but it's fourth down for the Buccaneers and many of the fans have made their way to the exits here in Tampa Buccaneers next game will be against the Green Bay Packers in Milwaukee fourth down and five. has been in a defensive tackle. Jim Morrissey now comes in. Dick is using everybody that's healthy. On fourth down, Young's pass is caught by McGee, and that'll be good enough for a Tampa Bay first down. And the 
Bucks will use their last timeout. So even though this game has long been decided, Lehman Bennett is playing the game as if the score were tied, and that's the sense. Of two games behind the Chicago Bears in the Central Division with a 24-10 game. The Vikings will play the Giants next week and then play the Bengals the week after. And they hang in there. Cincinnati going to be one of the surprise teams. Of, uh, I'm saying Minnesota, one of the surprise outfits. And Tommy Kramer, I think, having a Pro Bowl year at quarterback. Yeah. First and 10 at the 32 with 18 seconds to go, and the Buccaneers are all done with their timeouts. Young going up on top. Incomplete for Dave Williams. Reggie Phillips was defending. And it'll be second down. Phillips was the starter for the Bears at right cornerback. But he gave up a lot of big plays, and he lost his starting role to Vesti Jackson last Monday night against the Bears. And yet all the Bears defensive players will admit that Reggie Phillips is their fastest defensive player. An attribute you like to see in your corners, but Vesti Jackson, as a rookie, shows remarkable promise. Talking to Gary Fensick, he said, this guy, this guy can't miss. He's that good. Talking about Vesti Jackson. Second and ten. Young. Incomplete and uh, off the arm of one of the Bear defenders, Todd Bell. Ironically, last year, the Bears, in their 18 and one year, including playoffs, lost twice to the Buccaneers, who led at halftime in the first game and at halftime of the second. The Tampa Bay gave the Bears some two tough encounters last year, but this year, nothing of the sort. Well, in a game where you need to score some points, they just. I'm afraid they just don't have enough skilled people left. It's going to be a long second half of the season for Tampa if some of the people who are hurt can't come back and play. Third and ten with seven seconds to go in the ball game. Bears do not want to give up the touchdown, and they have a lot of men deep in a prevent. And they're going in the end zone, and it is incomplete, knocked away with no time remaining on the clock. For Dan Deardorff, I'm Dick Stockton saying so long from Tampa Stadium, where once again the final score, the Bears 23 and the Buccaneers.